Good evening. I call to order the meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission for the City of Apache Junction. The date is Tuesday, September 28, 2021. The time is now 7 o'clock p.m. I invite you to stand with me and recite the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. you. May be seated. Uh, roll call. Uh, Larry. Uh, Commissioner Barker. Here. Commissioner Begaman. Here. Commissioner Cantwell. Here. Vice Chair Hanchi. Here. Chair Heck. Here. Commissioner Cross. Here. Commissioner Gage. Here. Uh, all are present. You have a quorum, Mr. Chair. Very good. Thank you, Larry. All right. Next item on the agenda is consideration of approval for this evening's agenda along with the minutes from the meetings of August 10th, 2021 and August 24th, 2021. Do I hear a motion to accept the agenda and the minutes? Chair. I move the Planning and Zoning Commission accept the agenda as presented and approve the minutes from the August 10th, 2021 and August 24th, 2021 regular meetings. Second. Good. Thank you, I have a motion and a second. Roll call, Larry. Commissioner Gage. Here. Or yes. <laughs> Commis Commissioner Barker. Yes. Commissioner Begaman. Yes. Commissioner Cantwell. Yes. Vice Chair Hanchi. Yes. Chair Heck. Yes. Commissioner Cross. Yes. Uh, agenda and the minutes are approved, Mr. Chair. Very good. Thank you, Larry. All right. So we have two public hearings uh, scheduled for this evening. Uh, the first is item 21-486. Uh, uh, it's a presentation, discussion, public hearing, and consideration of P-21-68. Dash PZ, a proposed rezoning of approximately 22 acres, generally located near the southwest corner of Tomahawk Road and Broadway Avenue, uh, from general commercial B1 and high density multiple family residential, RM2, to high density multiple family residential by plan development. That's RM2 slash PD, to develop approximately 201 single family rental units. Uh, Kelsey. Good evening, Commission members. My name is Kelsey Shatnick. I'm a planner here on staff, and tonight's presentation is a rezoning request for a 201-unit single-family rental residential community to be called the Residences at Apache Trail. The subject property is located near the southwest corner of Broadway and Tomahawk. It consists of two parcels on approximately 22 acres. The western parcel is currently zoned High Density Multiple Family Residential, or RM2, and the eastern parcel is zoned General Commercial, or B1. The request is to rezone both parcels to RM2 PD, and I think it's important to note, uh, just so you're aware, that the, um, so the parcel that is zoned B1 Commercial is part of a larger commercial property, um, but the applicant is only rezoning this northern portion. Um, and the rest of the property will remain commercial. So here's a conceptual landscape plan for the property, which I think provides a good overview of the design and feel of the community. Uh, the community will consist of a mix of one, two, and three bedroom units. There will also be eight uh, two bedroom carriage units, will be, which will be located kind of towards the, um, the center of the community. Um, so the development will provide three architectural types with three elevations for each floor plan. Uh, the full con uh, conceptual elevations were provided to you in the staff report, but I thought I would highlight um, two of the different kinds of units at the property. So this first one you're seeing is an example of the attached duplex unit. Um, this is what you'll see with the one bedroom units, both the small and larger bedrooms. And then this conceptual is one of the standalone units, which is representative of the, um, the two and the three bedroom units. And both of these elevations include materials and features such as wood shutters, uh, stucco lace body finish, and um, coach lights. Here's an elevation um, of the carriage units. As you can see, the unit is located above garages that are available for other residents within the community. This is a um, two bedroom unit. And it's important to note that this is the only two-story units being offered in this development. The rest of them are single-story. I've also included a conceptual elevation of the clubhouse. Um, this will be part of a larger amenity area, which will include a pool, and will be located at the, um, 
at the primary entrance of the development. Here's an idea of the conceptual wall and monument sign plan. Um, these were designed in mind to complement the overall color scheme and feel of the development. This will be a gated community, as you can see from this conceptual monument wall plan. Um, you can see that, so there will be decorative wall here, as well as some views fencing around um, amenity areas. So the applicant is requesting a plan development as a part of this rezoning, and this table provides the overall development standards for the community. Uh, but as you can see, the applicant is only requesting one deviation from the base RM2 zoning district, and they're requesting a reduction of the rear yard setback from 20 feet to 10 feet. They think that this is a, uh, will give them a little bit more flexibility within the development and is more um, complementary of this kind of single-family rental unit as opposed to a uh, traditional kind of apartment complex. In terms of public input, a sign was posted at the site. Notices were sent out to property owners within 300 feet and it was advertised in the newspaper. A neighborhood meeting was held by the applicant on September 14th and only one neighbor attended uh, which supported the development and staff received one email from that same individual uh, showing their support of this project. That email was provided to you at your uh, seats at the beginning of this meeting. So with that, staff recommends approval of P2168PZ subject to the conditions of approval found in the staff report. This item is scheduled for a public hearing with the city council on October 19th at 7 p.m. And that concludes my presentation for the evening. I'd be happy to answer any initial questions you might have, but the applicant is present and does have a presentation. All right, well, questions from the commission? I guess, I guess not. Thank you, Kelsey. Um, okay, uh, and the rec uh, representing the applicant is uh, Adam Bow. Good evening, members of the commission. I appreciate your time tonight. Uh, Adam Baugh on behalf of Sonoma Communities, address 2525 East Arizona, Biltmore Circle. I, I appreciate staff's help. You can't get to this point without some coaching and uh, they've helped us get to where we are today. When you look at this site, there's a reason why it's been vacant for so long. Um, the geometry is a little odd, but secondly, there's some challenges that have plagued this property and likely the reason why it has yet to be developed. It's known, unfortunately, for dumping and trash and some mischievous activity but there's a large wash that cuts through the property. And when you have washes like that, it's really hard to predict water flows and floodplain and floodway and if you need FEMA assistance. And as a developer who needs to work forward something, uncertainty is a problem. And so what we've been able to do is design around some of those issues and bring in a, a development in a community that's probably a, um, a, an improvement on what you see in the area, but more importantly, hopefully sets the bar for the expectations of development going forward. I won't go through all the slides, but I will just jump through a couple of them. For example, on your general plan map, you'll notice this blue kind of dotted line that cuts through the property. That shows you the floodplain. It, it, it does have a significant overlay on our property. And I think we're, we've done well to make sure we've addressed that and included it in our plan. Um, what's important here is the majority of our properties already zoned RM2. We're only talking about the eastern corner there but the PAD overlay covers the entire property so we can come up with this creative solution here. Um, I love this because it shows you that you can do multifamily and you can do it in a highly designed manner to attract and push um, better rents and attract a an, uh, uh, better quality type of tenant. What we like about this is it's perfect for folks who have lived in this area for a while, who are ready to sell their home and capture equity, but still want to stay in the same area and not to deal with the maintenance obligations. So we feel like by design a, a superior product, better quality materials and architecture, you can attract that type of individual here. We're, I think staff's done a good job, so I won't hit all, all the bullet points that they covered, but what we do provide is an opportunity for multifamily in a new manner, significantly more open space, private rear yards, fully amenitized with security, uh, automated door features, uh, amenities on the inside, and superior finishes like larger sliding doors, taller ceilings, uh, better materials in the kitchen with your countertops. Uh, maybe it feels like a little bit of touch here and there, but the cumulative of, and totality of these things drive better rents, better demographics, and hopefully 
um, the type of people that you want to see lead from the, um, in the city of Avondale, excuse me, the city of Apache Junction. So as you go forward, you've already seen some elevations. I'll, I'll gut them pretty quickly. And at the end of the day, what we like about this product is it, it's a chance to solve a long-term problem you've had in, in Apache Junction. It's a chance to address the problems of blight and trash and some of the vacancy that's occurred here. It's a chance to address the issues impacted by the wash. It provides a diversity of housing. And when I look at your general plan and some of the goals outlined in, in the policy points there, it talks about that type of diversity to build a vibrant and strong community. And we think we can accomplish that here. At the end of the day, I appreciate staff support and more importantly, the support from the individual who attended our neighbor meeting as well. I'm not aware of any opposition, so I'll be brief so you can get on the rest of your agenda tonight, but I'm happy to take any questions that you might have. Very good. Thank you, Adam. All right, uh, yeah. Commission. Yeah. Have you observed that wash flowing with water? I have. Has it posed any problems to what you designed to have on that property? It is a concern. And uh, in fact, one of the things we've done in our PAD is built in a little bit of flexibility to adjust our units and our location and our sizing because we really won't know how intensive it is and what impact it will have until we complete a larger hydrology study. Those just occur subsequent to the zoning case. So with staff, we've built in a little bit of measure flexibility to make those accommodations based on what those engineering numbers will show. The reason I ask is because I live right next to that wash. <laughs> you know it firsthand. So, yeah. yeah. Mr. Chair? Yes, Commissioner Barker. Um, could you tell me how wide these streets are that go through here? How wide our streets are? Mm -hmm. That might be a technical question, a little bit of <laughs> past my level. Um, I do know that it complies with all your city's technical design standards with I'm regard to trash collection, refuge collection, fire safety routes. And two so the traffic. width is no concern for large trucks because I'm counting seven bins here for refuge collection. 150 or so people, maybe a little more, and they'll have to come through and go around. And also, where specifically are these carriage houses located? So uh, this is a really helpful exhibit. This shows you the five different types of products that we have and the rectangular brown squares are the garage units with the carriages above it. There's about eight of them throughout ah, the plan dispersed. And what I hope you'll appreciate is we didn't put those on the exterior. We've sort of centered them along our drive aisles. So heights more concentrated in the middle of the project. Okay. The rest of our units are all single story. Okay, and I'm, I'm trying to understand the design. <laughs> so the parking spaces are on the road that goes through the development and then these are walkways that go back to the homes. Is that correct? That is correct. <coughs> okay. And you, you color-coded the carriage houses. Are the rest of these color-coded? Yeah. Oh, cool. You can what kind of I? see how they lay out. <laughs> One thing that we've, this is maybe somewhat new in, in Apache Junction. The, this product type has been built everywhere. One thing that we do that I haven't seen others do is do a one bedroom small and one bedroom large. And by doing that, you can kind of capture a, a wider diversity of potential tenants. If you look at the, the image here, you'll see a couple of different colors. Those colors correspond to the unit type and where they're located. Some of these units are attached, some of them are detached. So our one bedroom smalls are attached, our one bedroom large are attached, but the two bedrooms and the three bedrooms are detached and they're kind of color coded on that exhibit right there. Okay, so what's what? Because we don't have a key. Does I, don't, I don't have right, a key, there's do one I? There's one. Look on your other computer screen. On the other, on the other screen, yes. Now I see it because it's not on my screen. <laughs> All right, good. And, and, and so uh, the drive, the, the parking isn't in the drive aisle, right? The, the parking is to the side of the drive aisle. So the drive aisles have the, the correct width as required by okay. city ordinance. And then there's opportunities for people to, to park in a covered garage or a covered space or an open space. Okay. But all these units are intended to, to look and live like a residential home, albeit in a bit of smaller environment, as opposed to a traditional apartment where you have people living above you and living side by side, and you can hear when they're playing their music or the party. In this case, it's a little bit more intimate and private. And every one of these units has their own private rear yard, which isn't something you typically see in an apartment project. And these yards are really patio spaces. It's a chance to have a little bit of privacy in the outdoor space for plants, a pet, or a zen garden. 
Okay. Yes, go ahead, Mr. Okay. Yeah. Um, I find the concept interesting, okay? I refer to this kind of as detached apartments. Am I kind of understanding that yeah, right? Fair summary, yeah. Okay, so this is intended for people who would normally be renting apartments rather than owning their own homes. That is correct. Okay, and on the carriage units, um, the living unit is above the garage? That is correct. Okay, because in, in some of those cases, then you're three deep. You have the carriage house, and you have another house, and then you have another house right up against it. Yeah, so what we've learned in the past is we've, uh, in our prior developments, they've just been garage units. And what we've learned is that, there, that by having a unit above, we can actually make them a little bit larger. So it's the first time we've been able to do the size of square foot of some of these large units, and it's only because we have the space to put them by the garage. So we can appeal to a variety of lifestyles and, and family sizes. And based on what you have done with other communities, what's the demographics of these, this type of development? Great question. This is your typical profile of a renter. Sometimes it's somebody who loves living in Apache Junction, wants to stay in Apache Junction, but is ready to get past the large home and the maintenance of air filters and pools and landscape timers. So they can still live in the same area where they've grown, but without the maintenance obligations. It might be a baby boomer, for example, or maybe a young professional who is newly married or newly uh, out of school, but is looking to stay and work in an area no nearby. Funny enough, there's a large dip portion of our rental profile that are single women. And I don't know what the particular attraction is to it, other than the fact that maybe because of all the obligation of maintenance is done by the management company, but it look, lives and feels like a private residence. And so if you're done living in an apartment community, but you still aren't ready for ownership, this is a great option for you. So these are the types of people that we think will either live here and eventually work their way towards homeownership, or who are exiting homeownership and looking to, for a little bit of an easier lifestyle. Mr. Yeah. Um, on the carriage units, do they have yards on them too? Carriage units do not have yards on them. Okay. Because I was trying to figure that out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, all right, Adam, a question. How many how many parking spaces are allocated per unit? Well, I don't know if, if the, the breakdown I can say per unit. That's a city standard that's required, but I can tell you that. The required parking are 365 spaces for this overall development, and we're at 430. <coughs> so we exceed what the requirement is per code. Okay, so it's over one and a half per. Yeah, it's two, about two, two, two per unit. Yeah. Would be two per, yeah, if it were 400, yeah, okay. Um, and that, that includes parking spaces around the clubhouse and things like that? Yeah, okay. so we have a little bit of everything. We have uncovered, we have covered, we have ADA, and then we have garage. And so uh, I would say between our, our covered is like 244 spaces. So we have, for every one uncovered, we have two covered, which is something you don't typically see in a community like this. And then we have the required amount of ADA spaces too. So I think what we've tried to do is figure out what, what's a situation where I'd want to live or want my parents to live in, and that's how we designed the project. Chair? Um, yes, Mr. Yeah. Cross. So, um, on the, uh, are you needing to have the uh, commercial zoning changed? You need that section of property, why? Number of houses to make the project financially feasible? Yeah, yeah, I mean, th th that's clearly one of the, the biggest driving factors. At the end of the day, the economics of, of scale dictate what your yield can be. And the owner of the property personally, would, I think, would like us to purchase all of it, but we're not commercial developers, and so we weren't comfortable buying the rest of the frontage along Tomahawk. But we knew what we needed as far as yield, tenant mix. And if you look at our density, we're only about 10 units an acre, and most of your multifamily is around 15 and up. And, and the reason why they go that high is because they can spread out the cost development over many units. Because we're sort of a lower density version of apartment housing or rental housing, we have to make sure we have enough units to make it work. The challenge that I find, I think this comes to your point, Commissioner, um, is the wash. The wash is a little bit of a wild card for us, and that wash could be pretty costly. And so um, we feel pretty confident in the initial analysis we've done, but we know that at some point 
additional studies may push those costs more than we anticipate, and so we feel like we have just the right amount of units to cover that if that worst case scenario happens. Okay. On the, um, back to the commercial side, do you have a um, mailbox units over there, or are all the mailbox units over on the main property? You, I think you may have stumped me tonight. I don't know that, that answer myself, Because Jim. you would have people driving in to get their mail, then driving back out. To be honest, I don't know if we've go gotten that side. far into our planning, but we could probably put a mailbox unit on that side. That, it's just a little early for that, but as far as like those final design plans, yeah, it wouldn't be a problem for us to add a cluster mailbox on the east side of that wash, just like we have on the west side. You're planning on putting a pedestrian bridge over the wash. That's correct. Um, do you have a proposed elevation for it? I do not. Recommendation would be to make it high enough to where pedestrians, horses, horseback riders can get underneath it because the plan overall in the city is to kind of make Weeks Wash a trail friendly Amenity. area. Okay, noted. Okay. Um, how many electric vehicle stations, charging stations are you going to have? I, I don't believe we have that built into our plan. Might want to. <laughs> I mean, obviously that's where the future of driving is heading, and it would be a shame to put all your you know, infrastructure in and not have that available. Not a problem. We have done that in some of our other developments, and we can entertain that. Mr. Chair, follow-up yes, on Daryl's question there. Uh, speaking of horses, where would they enter to use the wash, Daryl? From the street. So coming through the second vehicular entrance? Well, they, you know, if, if in fact somewhere down the road Weeks Wash is made into a trail system, yeah, at least they would be able to just, you know, at that, that point that it would be a, why it, I asked yeah, it would be a street crossing right there and then they just drop down into the wash and continue on. I mean, it, if, if, long term, long term thinking. Well, it's, but it's part of the plan, so yeah. So Mr. Chair. Private property. And so I think that's something we'd have to entertain if that's something we would open well, up. We would certainly take a dedication after you improve Absolutely. the channel or whatever, but so <laughs> we could talk about that. So the city does own part of Weeks Wash, and we're actually in the process of uh, a property owner. What unfortunately happens sometimes with subdivisions, the HOA decides not to pay taxes on tracks. So there are two subdivisions. I think it's south of Southern. Eastern side is not in the city. Western side is in the city. And one property owner bought at a sheriff uh, tax certificate sale two triangle parcels of week's, week's wash. And so after years of getting on them to keep it clean, they uh, have decided to work with the city and, and donate that to the city. So ultimately the city, I think it's better off in the long run. Same thing we did with the KOA campground was try to right have you know city trail system really all the way through the city so i think it'd be a great amenity to the project as well if we continue to work with the developer on a when uh, i look at the layout dedication. it almost looks like the the street that comes down there on mm -hmm. the edge of the is the wash yeah. so it looks like the wash is either going down the street or under the street mm -hmm. am i seeing that correctly well, there's two. I think it's under the street, isn't it? And yeah, it's right down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah it crosses under Broadway under, there. Yeah. Right. It goes yeah. under Broadway and then yeah. comes it, down. It does flow yeah. down along Omaha. Right. Well, well, it, it was, it it was comes down to Omaha, comes down to the yeah. Broadway. About, and I think that's the one. Yeah, that's neat. Yeah, and uh, Larry, there was something in the packet about um, there's going to be some development on Tomahawk or... Uh, water planning and or some some work being done on Tomahawk, which is why there wasn't an entrance off of Tomahawk. Um, yeah. Well, Tomahawk itself, last time we had the 250 year event, Tomahawk itself became the wash, if uh, some of you remember from August, uh, year and two years ago. No, so very, I don't know if the city that. is anticipating any other city work on Tomahawk in terms of flood projects. We are working with the county just across the road here to build a five to 10 acre retention basin on the county property just to the, across the Highway 88 here. The city has developed, they purchased the uh, O'Malley property and developed a big retention basin on 2nd and Tomahawk. Oh, yeah. So on FEMA has studied this area, so some of the preliminary maps are out. 
uh, as to how the FEMA maps might change because there's ponding areas in some of this area. Some of it has mapped A zones and some have the floodway delineated. So the new FEMA studies, uh, a, a lot of work has been done on that and the city engineer is more involved in that than we are. Sure. Very good, okay, yes. Did, Mr. You, did you purchase the other part of that property that's business, zone business? Did that um, what other? Uh, the, the little southern, corner the along of that Tomahawk little there. He's sticking out. We are an escrow to purchase the property, but we won't we won't purchase city property until the zoning comments are done. But the only thing that we're purchasing is the area defined in yellow on this exhibit here. Okay, so that's still owned independently by somebody yeah. else. So, okay. I have one more right, question. Oh, yes, Commissioner yeah, Just Parker. curiosity, when do you expect to break ground for this? As soon as we can. Uh, okay. There's a tremendous interest and demand in this. I know there's a, additional processes to go through after right. the city council, right. but I don't think you'd see much delay on our side. Oh, okay. Yeah, we have some property owners that sit on it for quite a long time. Yeah. I was hoping you were not one of them. I hope I'm not either. <laughs> yeah. Given so in other words, it's not a now, flip. I would think they would like this in yesterday. Yeah, yeah. sure. Right. I got another question. For yes. Uh, yes, Vice Chair. Uh, Larry, looking at this map that's up, across the street there, that was recently just rezoned for that other townhouse subdivision, correct? So correct, we'll the having, property. Yeah. 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 property. Yeah, so we'll be having similar style yeah, properties going This was in. actually approved for a three-story yeah. right. yeah, product. Condos. I think 107 units were approved there. Right, so that'll be going hopefully soon. They'll, they're gonna plat it because yeah. those are gonna be for sale. So they're gonna come back with a subdivision plat. Okay, and then we only have one apartment complex in AJ, correct? And that's right there. Well, no, no you have the crossings beautiful. and you have uh, some townhome type projects. The other apartments that were built years ago were turned into condos just across the street here from the MGC. Yeah. So like major apartment complexes, we really just have uh, this one that you see. Right. It used to be a tax credit, low income housing tax credit project. It's now no longer, it was sold and taken out of tax credit syndication. The other one is the crossings right over here on Plaza. Okay. And there's Royal. some smaller on Royal Palm. There's a lot of fourplexes along Royal Palm between Winchester and Royal Palm between like 9th, 10th Street, North 10th East. Avenue. And yeah. And, and but those are really That's what this is right here. This is Royal Palm and Old West right, right. here. That's what this is right here. Right. And there's some fourplexes on the other side of Royal Palm, right. over to Winchester. Northeast corner of Broadway and Tomahawk. There are some projects. The, this is the, I believe, uh, in here, this is the county housing. And this is a uh, senior housing unit. Living. Yes, yes. assisted living. Right. Yeah. Okay, any other questions from the commission? Yeah, Mr. Nope. Chairman, oh, this is yes, Commissioner yes. Gage. Yeah, I'm curious about the um, the sewer situation. I assume that this development will require connection to the uh, to a sewer main. Can you describe where that's going to take place and uh, what kind of discussions have gone on about uh, when and how that sewer main is going to be extended to your property? Sewer. Um I know that sewer is to the south. I could pull up the aerial photo where Dan Kaufman built uh, Belagave, so it is south. Um, I, don't, I think he's extended it north. Um, obviously, there's sewer to the west, which is part of the, the apartments project. Uh, I don't know about some of those old mobile home parks, if they're on package plants or if they're connected to sewer, but uh, obviously, the development of this density is gonna require sewer. Okay, thanks. And then also the in the packet that we received, there was a, 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 a large volume of traffic studies, um, and I'm concerned about the intersection with Royal Palm and the uh, Old West Highway. It, are you guys comfortable that that's going to be a safe intersection when we add this much traffic to the area? Well, that intersection is problematic as it is, as Royal Palm makes that curve. Uh, yep. I don't know if Emil had 
uh, specific questions on the traffic study, um, but I think as we move further into the development, uh, that intersection is already problematic. So okay. additional traffic, again, the way the property ownership works, there are different property owners along Old West Highway as well, so it didn't really work out well to have um, access right off of Old West. And I think folks will naturally come out to the intersection they're most comfortable with. Uh, doesn't answer the question, but they'll come out on Tomahawk and come to the signal if they are having problems. But I think we do need to work closer with the city engineer as to what the long-term plans are for that. Uh, that again, not a good intersection as it is today either. That intersection okay. side, I will tell you that the, the trip gen statement actually shows very low, relatively low trips during our peak hours in the morning and in the evening compared to other more intensive uses. And also that a lot of the tra traffic signal warrants that would normally be triggered aren't triggered by this project at all. It's just at a 10 unit per acre density comparable to other multifamily product, this is actually one of the few things that, that work really well in the traffic wise pattern. Mr. Chair. Okay. Thanks. And I, I, you know, I agree with Larry. That intersection is problematic, and this will just, you know, speed up our the city's reaction to it. I think <laughs> it's going to have to be addressed at some point. Thanks. That's all I've got. Thank you, Jesse. All right. Commissioner Begman. When was your traffic study done? What time of the year? It, it's not a traffic study. It's a trip generation statement. The city's engineer will tell us if we need to apply for a traffic study. Okay. So you have not viewed the traffic Correct. on on Broadway. And I can tell you Tomahawk is a highway between five and eight in the morning and five and eight in the evening. What? So. I, I believe it. Um, one of the things that we do is prepare a model and a trip generation mm -hmm. statement. Then the city engineer reviews it and then says, this model indicates that we need to now require a traffic study that hasn't been triggered or necessitated, but if they ask, okay. we'll prepare one. Because wintertime brings significantly more traffic into that area. I imagine. Mr. Crow? Um, in regards to the question on the sewer under the utilities, the, um, it was stated that the city is currently working on capital improvement project or trying to secure a grant to put a CIP in um, south of Old West Highway on Tomahawk. And um, if that were the case, you would be able to tap into that and bring it up roughly 800 feet to the north to service that property. If that capital improvement project falls through, you're going to have to put in a lift station from what I read. What kind of difficulties and what kind of issues is that going to be with Weeks Wash right there? Yeah, well, uh, all, all things present challenges, but it won't be something we can't overcome. The beauty of, of a project like this is it's two parts. One, can you engineer it? Two, does the land plan work? And we believe the land plan works and staff support of it. And we believe the engineering work, but the finer tuning of this project happens post zoning. At the end of the day, if you can't prove hydrology, if you can't prove infrastructure, you can have a paper approval that, that's worthless. And so we fully believe, though, that we can accomplish that and demonstrate it, because no permits can be issued if we can't. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other questions from the commission? No, I have none. Right. You have another one? No. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you so Adam. Much. All right. This is a public hearing. Members of the public <coughs> have the opportunity to speak on this matter. To clarify, statements from the public must be related to this case and no other. Uh, when recognized by the chair, please come down to the podium, state your name and address for the record, and present your statement. Please make certain to speak into the microphone, and there's a five-minute time limit. So, sir, would you like to come up? George Schroeder, 244 West Virginia. Pardon my voice. <clears throat> almost never come to these meetings, but I've applied for the board, so <laughs> I'm going to get a crash course. In this Sonoma deal, I, I believe a lot of work went into it. I see good stuff in it. I'm opposed to apartments in general, especially two and three stories. That, that, that's garbage. We don't want Mesa ever. 
So the carriage units are, are a little disturbing when you got different people using different people's garages under their houses, noises, you know, clean this up, clean that up. So I see issues there. The sewer, uh, we need to make them uh, absolutely upfront liable if, or at least, uh, you know, combined effort between the city and uh, the developer to, to get that sewer right now, not down the road, right now. Traffic on the Old West Highway isn't what it used to be, but it is increasing. Of course, it's going to increase even more and more as these lots fill up. Um, again, kudos to them. I like the designs. I like what they did. Great, great. They're, they're taking up just empty dust lots that make us look like a desolate, nowhere town. So that's great. Um, I would caution any other developers, I'm not going anywhere. I got a lot to say. And recently, it seems like more and more my word means something. Maybe not to you, to you, to you, to you, but overall, out to uh, Apache land. So please take my comments literally. I mean what I say, I say what I do, and <laughs> nobody's going to deny it. I got a lot of success here lately. So let's keep the good stuff, you know, coming. But we don't want to be like Mesa, ever. I'm telling you, I don't know anybody in this town that wants us to be part of Mesa. So let's keep up the good work. That is a good development, but we got things to do on it. Very good. Thank you. So anyone else who wishes to speak on this matter? Uh, Sir, the blue hat cap. So yes, I'm Scott Odenkirk on Six Shooter Road. I do have a comment, but I also have a question. This is the first time I've attended a, any kind of zoning, anything like this. What is the procedure? Is it eventually voted on? Or is it if they meet all the criteria criteria goes through or what is the procedure with this because I really don't know yeah sir we are not permitted to answer questions this is a forum for you to express make comments you may ask questions that might be directed elsewhere but we can't answer your questions sitting okay, fair enough okay. now my comment is I've lived here about 10 years and what attracted me to Apache Junction is the openness of it in fact, we can ride our horses, we can, neighbors can ride, ride your quads. And basically, my family, my neighbors, my friends, we don't want the developments in Apache Junction to be bought. To use his line, we don't want to turn into Mesa, we don't want to turn into Santan where it takes two hours getting through traffic, one apartment division or housing division after another. In general, we just don't want the development here. I understand there's advantages to it, but you know, we just don't want, we feel like the developments are getting pushed in on us. And that's not what, what the feeling of the community is. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yes, sir. I'm uh, Jeff Barlett. I live over at 108 North Meridian Drive, apartment 220 in Apache Junction, Arizona. What I'd like to say, I have a different opinion on this, and, and obviously, if you hear my address there, I actually rent, so I know what it's like to have to rent an apartment, and recently here in Arizona, you have a lot of people who come in from other states, and it makes the cost of living go up, and people are having trouble finding a place to live, and I live on the border of Apache Junction in Mesa. I actually live in that Maricopa County section that's west of uh, Meridian Drive, but it's still considered Apache Junction. I don't have a problem with Apache Junction turning into Mesa. I, I like it out in Mesa. Who knows, I'll probably move back over there soon. I rarely, because I live there, I rarely do anything in Apache Junction. I usually go to Mesa, Gilbert, Chandler. I work in Chandler, so I mean, I kind of take offense to that when people say, let's not be like Mesa. I think we should be more like Mesa. Be more like Phoenix if we can. And the thing is, I mean, these properties look really nice. I'm looking at the slideshow, and these look like some really nice properties that can help 
provide housing for people. And I actually think they're really nicely designed and I'm watching the commission just scrutinize the property here with all these potential regulations. I don't think it's a good idea. I think a property owner should be allowed to do what they want with their property and I think all these regulations make the cost of living go up for people. The more regulations you have, I mean, it's going to be less properties available. And the thing is with uh, properties like this, it's supply and demand. The more supply you have, the lower the cost is going to be and the lower the cost of living for people. And I think it's a good thing that someone's trying to bring in 201 uh, single family residential units. That's going to drop the cost of living down for people. And I think it's a great thing to see this. And all these regulations, I mean, a lot of them are kind of crazy too. I mean, I, I've gone on the internet and I've seen people build these tiny houses and they've made it work. Two weeks ago, I was out of the country and I was in Moscow and uh, they had this elevator inside the property that's about the size of this pulpit, maybe a little bigger, and you can fit three people in and you can make it work. I mean, these regulations sometimes get a little crazy on these properties and there's ways to make it work and there's ways to uh, do things to make it safe and effective and I feel that if this property gets approved, it's going to help lower the cost of living for people. Thank you for hearing my concerns and God bless. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, sir. this until that. Uh, my name is Ken Bradley. I live at 635 North Royal Palm Road. I've lived in Arizona since 1981. I moved to Apache Junction in 1984. I've lived out here since 84. I've ridden behind the Superstition Mountains. I've ridden up and down the 88, all the trails. I've ridden over Bulldog Canyon when you could get to the Salt River. This is Apache Junction. This is not apartment land. Okay. My wife lived in a condo in Mesa. I brought her out here. At first she was like, I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna like this. We love it. We've been out here in our house on Royal Palm, 16 years? 16 years, okay? I have to, I have to rely on her for memory, okay? I was a caretaker at PNM Marina when I came back from Korea in the military. Peacetime, I'm not, I'm not a hero. I was peacetime in Korea. But I was a caretaker at PNM Marina from 88 to 91. I knew Judge Goodman, the Mustang program, all of that. That's not gonna happen if we have apartments. They're not gonna put a horse trail down Weeks Wash with apartments. All those people are gonna go, oh, it smells like horses. We're already experiencing that out here. Now, I don't have horses right now, because quite frankly, I work too much. I don't have time for them. But I'd love to have horses, again, Please, don't put the apartments in here. Nothing against the developers. Kudos for them. I agree. The presentation is good. They don't have enough answers. They don't have enough plan. And we've seen Weeks Wash. We know what Weeks Wash can do. I've seen it tear those people's houses up. That's why you bought their property. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that wishes to make comment? Yes, sir. Jim Bowler, live at 1950 East 12th Avenue. I actually just have a question. Where's the main entrance? Probably a better question for you. So is most of the traffic going to come out on Broadway? I might have missed that slide, so. Everything's on, okay. Okay, perfect. That's pretty much my only question. I do have sentiments with the last speaker. I mean, we moved out here and bought property. We have two horses for pretty much a 12th and, and uh, Tomahawk. I understand development has to happen. I'm a general contractor, so I get it. You know, I'm not building, I'm not making money, but I'd rather not see it go in there, but uh, you know, I also understand 
the city's going to profit off of it and make the city better in general. So, um, again, thanks. Thanks for all my time. Appreciate it. Great. Thank you. Anyone else who wishes to give comment? No? All right. Then I will close the public hearing uh, and we'll allow for, uh, well, we have to do, allow for comments or discussion amongst the commission and then we do have to do review the fi finding of facts. So any, any comments from the commission? Yes. <laughs> I'm not entirely comfortable with um, rezoning commercial property to residential yeah. property. Yeah. I'm tired of seeing that happen on the, and we just lost a, a big chunk of commercial property right across the street from this project. And I tend to think that we should protect our commercial property as much as we can. Mr. Chair. Yes, yes, Commissioner. May Bob. I address that? I agree with you. I'm sure you know that already. <laughs> but, but this is, is not on North Apache Trail. And I think that allows for the residential since the rest of the southern part part of this parcel is on the trail and it is B1. And I would not want to see that change to residential, but I can understand putting residential behind it coming off of Broadway. That makes sense to me. Yeah, I agree with the, the, the major part of the plot. Yeah. It seems yeah. like a, a, you know, good, a nice development. I'm just- a good, good place for a development. I understand the sentiments that are coming from everyone out here, I've been here 50 years, understood, um, but we're gonna grow. We may as well grow well and, and do the best possible job we can with that growth. These are not apartments per no. se, no, and homes. I think that, in my mind, makes a difference. They look more like homes, Agreed. and I like that part. Can I interject something else there? Yes, Mr. Cole. I have seen that property right after a rainstorm, or actually during a rainstorm. Yep. And not regarding the wash itself, but our, our local uh, mud boggers, <laughs> they like to get out there and just tear that thing all to heck. And it's atrocious. You go back on video footage from the uh, uh, news helicopter when we had the big flood. I have video of that somebody in a great big suburban just just ripping that desert all to pieces. Yeah. This would put a stop to that. Yes, it will. Uh, chair. Uh, yes, Vice Chair Hanson. Um, I have several thoughts on this. Um, I like the fact that it's not a conventional apartment complex. We need rentals. We need places for families and people to live. It's a compromise, people get yards, they get open spaces. It's, it's what AJ in a way is like, I think. It's an apartment area, but it has openness. And that's what AJ's about, having some openness. Not everybody wants an acre and a quarter. Not everybody can take care of an acre and a quarter. Not everybody wants horse property. But at the same time, we're not stacking shoe boxes up on top of each other and cramming as much in here as we can. I think if we develop this and they put the proper control in, I think it'll actually help the wash area. And before they can do any permits or anything, it has to be studied and they have to put the proper proper building in. The same thing with all the sewer hookup and everything. They can't pull a single permit until that's all figured out. We're at the early stage of this and that's why we don't have those kind of details because they're not gonna invest the money until if they get the zoning. Um, I don't like the idea of turning com commercial property into residential but I think that little section to get all this and to get needed places for families to live 
is a good trade-off. I think it goes in the right area. We have other rental, we got our other apartment complexes across the street there. We have townhouses that we approved less than a year ago going in across the street from here. This is an oddball shaped parcel. It doesn't lend itself to a lot of different uses. And if we can get moving on this, it will clean up a nice er uh, an area of town that hasn't been very nice. And we got new business with Toasts across the street from this. They've come into the community and recently in the last, what, year, year and a half. It could provide good boost for that business and other businesses along there. Um, and maybe you get all that in, it'll start triggering some of the commercial property on the other side that'll start going in. Um, you know, I'm worried about, you know, maintaining trails and everything for the horses and that too. I don't know, can we put something in to where they, as one of the conditions of the rezoning, they have to commit to providing access for a horse trail in the future? Well, the trails are generally multi-purpose, so it would not be just horses. It would be whatever. walkers, dog walkers, whatever. So, yeah, there's 13 conditions associated with this. Um, so one would be, another condition would be to work with the city on ultimately dedicating that land to the city. I mean, the, the Public Works Department already maintains a lot of Weeks Wash um, area, to yeah. especially to the south, so that is in our long-range active yeah. transportation plan. But you know, anything up here, just make it a condition that they have to give us access to it at some point in the future if needed as part of the rezoning. Chair, I have a few comments. First of all, this property has been for sale or available for sale for over 30 years. As commercial property, I don't recall anybody being interested in buying it to put in any commercial businesses or even light industry businesses in the entire time that I've been here, and I've been here just a little bit shorter than when Commissioner Barker has been here. And in fact, when I came here, where I live was not in the city of Apache Junction. So, we can deny this and leave the property as it is, vacant and available for commercial development, which I don't really foresee happening. Hasn't happened in 30 years. I don't think it's gonna happen in the near future, which would not benefit the city any. I live less than a mile south of this property. I live six houses away from Weeks Wash. I know what Weeks Wash is capable of doing. In fact, I've been working with the city engineer to alleviate some of my problems because the city is partial to those problems. Now, I'm in favor of this development. I'm in favor of the rezoning. We have a shortage of rental properties in this community, which is evidenced over the past year and a half, two years, where people have been struggling to try and find a place to rent. And I'm not talking about from October to April, I'm talking about from April to October. I know several real estate people in this community and I know that they are in property management and I refer people and they come back to me and they say, Dirk, we don't have anything available. It just happened this morning. Two real estate persons that I know that are in property management in this town had to tell me that they don't have anything available, that I couldn't refer anybody to them. So there is a need for this sort of thing, this rental property available in this community. Now, I am not in favor of changing commercial or light industry properties into houses. You know that. I've stated that several times 
here on the commission and to the former commissions. But I think this is a good move. It's going to answer a part of a problem that we have in rental properties. I don't think that the increased traffic is going to be that big of an issue. Now, I do see a problem with Weeks Wash. But that's going to be up to them. They're going to have to figure out how to work around that tremendous funnel of water. And hopefully what they do won't impact my property. But I'm in favor of this. And I think this is a right thing to do. It allows us to use some property that's been sitting vacant since I can remember. Nobody's interested in it. Nobody's posed an interest that I'm aware of in 30 years. I think this is a good move. And I know that there's some people in town that do not want us to have more rooftops. I'm one of them. But I also have to look to the future. And our planned development that we all voted on about four years ago includes stuff like this. We all voted on it. We approved it. So now that we've done that, let's go with it. Instead of saying, oh no, we can't have no more rooftops. I like to have my property. Of the people that came up and talked to us tonight and expressed their concerns, only one other person lives near this property. One lives a little bit away from it, not that far. But the others live on the west side of town. This property change will not affect them in any way. So I'm in favor of it. And I think that it's a good move for this community. Thank you, Commissioner Begman. Uh, just one final comment from me. I, I too have, uh, and I have voted in opposition to rezoning uh, um, business or, or or commercial parcels into residential. Uh, and in this, I would normally have that same approach. However, I do think because there is uh, commercial property right along Old West Highway, I think that does create the opportunity for a win-win that there will be residential home, residential renters uh, there that can support business down there. And I think because of that and the Lennar homes down farther down Old West Highway, there's an opportunity to see commercial uh, development along the Old West Highway. Mr. Chair. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, kind of along those same lines, I also think that this will be a good idea because it will help promote some of those commercial areas along Old West. Because right now, you know, I live over on Goldfield. So I come up Old West, and there's really nothing between um, Goldfield and at least Tomahawk and really Royal Palm. Um, to attract anybody down there and I think as we start putting in developments like this it will help promote some of that very good thank you all right uh, so before we uh, proceed to uh, a motion uh, we uh, it's a requirement that we pardon the issue to before. oh um, well we can do that when we make the motion I think do it before or oh. well uh, we can if we want to have it make it officially part of the um, part of the conditions. Um, so we're gonna. Yeah. Easy one to put in. Your words, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's not yeah. a problem. So, it's an easy one to put in. Yeah. All right. So if you we're, we're gonna add before we do a motion, we're gonna add one condition to the uh, to the um, motion. So yeah. um, do you wanna? Does someone want to? Okay, that, that would be condition 14. Yeah. It would be that the developer work with the city to dedicate land around Weeks Wash as a trail. Access to the Access, yeah. yeah. Okay. That works, mm -hmm. Larry. Okay, yep. Okay, all right, so now, again, as required by the zoning ordinance, we do have to review the findings of fact, so. Um, 
So the first finding is that better design cannot be achieved by applying the strict provisions of underlying zoning, dis zoning district. Do we agree? Agreed. I agree. Murphy. The strict adherence to the provisions of zoning ordinance is not required in order to ensure the health, safety, welfare, and of the inhabitants of the proposed development. Definitely. Definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. The strict adherence to the ordinance is not required to ensure the property values of adjacent properties will not be reduced. Yeah. Yeah. Go up. Yeah. Property yeah. values that go up, not yeah. down. Then do we have to do the fact findings? Yeah. 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 The minor yeah. factor, the minor, yeah, for the. Uh, whether the amendment proposes a land use designation that the land use map does not adequately provide optional sites to accommodate. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Not an issue. Yeah. Not an issue. Yeah. Yeah. Not an issue with that. Whether the amendment constitutes an overall improvement to the general plan will not solely benefit a particular landowner or owners at particular point in time and is consistent with the overall intent of the 20 to 2050 general plan. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, whether the proposed amendment is justified by an error in the 20 mm -hmm. to 20 2020 to 2050 general plan as originally adopted. No, 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 error. There's no error there, there, is there no. so it's no. not a problem. Whether the proposed change is generally consistent with the goals, objectives, and other elements of the 2020 to 2050 general plan. It's not it is. an issue. Okay. Um, let's see. I've been do you have to read all that, or? No, I just go to five. Um, five, yes. okay. Yeah, Whether the proposed up. change is justified by a change in community conditions or neighborhood characteristics since the adoption, since adoption of the plan. It's not an issue. Yeah. It should not. No problem. Okay. Whether the amendment will adversely impact a portion or the entire community by a significantly Altering, accepting, uh, alternately acceptable existing land use patterns, especially in established neighborhoods. No, no problem. It's not an issue. No. Uh, I'm not going to read all that. <laughs> Say what? Yeah. And that's it, huh? No, there's. I don't see no issues with any of them. Yeah, I guess we just yeah, probably ask yeah. if there's any other, any other the remainder of these. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think there's any other concerns. I think the last one is the recreation. Okay, so if the commission does not, uh, not recognize any concerns from the findings of fact, uh, then I will, I will accept a motion. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Barker. Deep breath. I move that the Planning and Zoning Commission recommend to the Apache Junction City Council the approval of plan development rezoning P-21-68-PZ, a request by Sonoma Communities, the developer, represented by Adam Bauer, number 201 for rent single family residential community to be named the residences at Apache Trail, generally located near the southwest corner of Broadway Avenue and Tomahawk Road from General Commercial B1 to and RM-2, high density multiple family residential, to high density multiple family residential by plan development RM2 slash PD, subject to the following conditions of approval. One, all the provisions of the zoning ordinance are applicable to this case. Two, the development shall reflect substantial compliance and consistency with the plan development presented with case P-21-68-PZ, incorporated by reference herein and as otherwise specified through these conditions of approval to include general layout, elevations, lot sizes, setbacks, reduced rear setback of 10 feet, public and private rights of ways, 
easements and tracks, amenities including proposed pool and clubhouse, perimeter and interior lot separation walls, model types, landscaping and other improvements. Three, all elevation shall include a uniform application of materials on all buildings. Different color palettes shall be used to differentiate and vary building uh, elevations. Allocation of material. Oh, sorry. Could you try again? No. <laughs> sorry. My, my iPad does that when I talk too much. <laughs> uh, allocation of material shall be consistent throughout the site. Four, landscape screening and irrigation improvements planted within minimum a maximum or a minimum of 10 foot deep strip inside the net property line but outside of required walls along the perimeters of the property shall be provided in compliance with the city's landscape and screening requirements contained in Apache Junction City Code Volume 2 Land Development Code Chapter 1 Zoning Ordinance Articles 1 through 8 Landscape Regulations all required trees shall be 24 inch box and all required shrubs shall be five gallons in size and a decorative six foot tall fence shall be constructed. Five street improvements include but not necessarily limited to <coughs> extension of pavement and the provision of sidewalk curb gutter street lights underground utilities fire hydrants landscaping shall be required as part of this planned development project and subject to review and approval by the city engineer. Six, the developer shall meet the traffic impact analysis, Clomar and Lamar drainage and FEMA floodplain requirements as outlined by the city engineer in the previously provided pre-application and review comments. Seven, the proposed development will not be age restricted. Eight, all applicable permits shall be applied for and plans shall be des designed to current city codes prior to any lot grading or construction on the lots. Inclusively, all applicable development fees, including public art fees, shall be paid at the time of permit issuance. Development fees shall be paid on a per lot, per unit basis. Nine, all common areas, amenity areas, and tracks within and immediately adjacent to the proposed development, including perimeter walls and fences and interior and exterior common area landscaping, shall be owned and maintained in good condition at all times by the Owners or Homeowners Association of the proposed subdivision. Ten, the developer's engineer shall meet the civil engineer engineering improvement plans and document requirements as outlined in the previously provided pre-application and review comments and in accordance to the city's approved engineering standards that are in effect at the time of plan submittal. 11, a land division of the northern portion of the eastern parcel 102-02-001B and subsequent lot combination of the newly created parcel and existing RM-2 zone parcel 102-02-002B shall be required. 12, minor PD modifications or alterations of the approved architecture, designs, floor plans, open space unit mix, clubhouse location, <laughs> And or development plan shall be administratively reviewed and approved by the director or designee. 13, major deviations or proposed changes from the original plans associated with this case will require a major PD amendment. The director or designee shall interpret the proposed modifications to be significant slash major if in the director or designee's opinion the modified project density, i.e. units per acre, is proposed to be increased by more than 10%. The quality of the project design is diminished and types of proposed land uses are significantly altered and or the overall character of the project is contrary to the intent and spirit of the original City Council PD ordinance approval. 14, that the developer will meet with the city to dedicate uh, pieces of the land for trails, for trail use. 
Very good. Thank you. I have a motion. Do I hear a second? Second. second. Very good. I have a second. Uh, I'll now call for a vote. Um, roll call. Larry. Commissioner Cross. Yes. Commissioner Gage. Yes. Commissioner Barker. Yes. Commissioner Begaman. Yes. Commissioner Cantwell. Yes. Vice Chair Hansi. Yes. Chair Heck. Yes. Motion carries, Mr. Chair. Very good. Thank you. All right. Uh, <clears throat> second public hearing is item 21-528. Um, that's presentation, discussion, public hearing, and consideration of case P-21-73-PZ, a proposed rezoning by plan development requested by Chris Hundelt of Keystone Homes of 14.77 acres located at the southwest corner of Superstition Boulevard and Royal Palm Road from RSGR, General Rural Low Density Single Family Detached Residential, to RM-2PD, which is High Density Multiple Family Residential by Plan Development, for the purpose of developing a 166-unit rental residential community. And Nick. Good evening, Commission members. Hey, Nick. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So tonight I represent staff in our presentation of a case P-21-73-PZ, which as, as Chairman Heck just noted, is a rezoning by plan development request of Keystone Homes. And it is titled the, the Havenly Superstition. It is actually located right down the street from where we currently are, up in the top left of this picture is the City Hall Complex. So on, on the southwest corner of Superstition Boulevard and Royal Palm Road, there are three, almost 15 acres, there's three five acre each almost, so almost 15 acres, the uh, extra 2.3, point, sorry, I mean 0.23 acres is just a cut out of the right of way when, when ADOT created the, uh, the roundabout and everything. But, so it's essentially about 15 acres. Uh, it is currently zoned RSGR. The proposal is that it be RM2PD, which is the high density multifamily residential. Just uh, for context of the zoning. So around this, this area is kind of um, a smatter of different zoning types. A lot of it is the residential general rule that these properties currently are. There are also the, the exact zoning type that, that this is being zoned to are located in the immediate vicinity. Um, so you have, you have a different variety of zoning types in the area. Just north of this is state land. So it, it's kind of an odd, or north of this is a, uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's kind of going to be undeveloped until the state decides for something to happen with it. It's kind of out of the city's control with that. But around the property, you have a variety of different land use types. Now with that, it is part of the general plan designation for the downtown redevelopment area. That stops at Royal Palm. And uh, with that comes a mixed use designation that allows technically up to 40 units an acre. This, this, this uh, rezoning is not proposing anything of that sort, but just for context, up until Royal Palm within the city general plan, for the purpose of developing a uh, residential base for downtown businesses and the like, and being able to form a solid core within the city, uh, the land up to Royal Palm in between the Y and just around that as well has been designated as part of the downtown core. So with this, it doesn't require a general plan amendment because the densities technically can go far, far higher, but this rezoning is only suggested around 11 to 13 units an acre, similar to what we just saw. So here is the, the conceptual landscape and site plan. Like the plan before it, these things have been color coded. I don't have a, a, uh, a key for what unit is what. I believe that the applicant is still trying to figure out uh, the division of the different unit types, architecture types, and what goes where. But within the, the, the presented plan, there is a variety of different um, unit layouts. Uh, there's something to note, there are pocket parks that are located all throughout the site. There is one larger dog park uh, slash like uh, amenity area, uh, but within these little pockets here, I think they call them like spider webs, 
or spider parks, you have these little green spaces, open spaces where people can gather, uh, as well as an amenity area near the north entrance. Uh, just for note, there are deceleration lanes provided off of Superstition Boulevard and uh, Royal Palm. And the entrance on Royal Palm is noted to be for residents only. It is e ingress and egress, so entrance and exit, but it is uh, to be reserved for residents as well, instead of just general traffic. That will be located off of Superstition Boulevard. This is one of the, this is the proposed wall and monument sign plan, just to, to represent what would be shown at the very entrance of the property right off of Superstition Boulevard. That would be located right here. And that theme wall shown right before is identified in red. That would be the exterior of the property. Uh, it would be more of a normal block wall facing the west and the south. Uh, the applicant has shown quite a variety of different architectural elevations. There are about eight different architectural types, one of which is, includes a, a duplex. There is a, a variation shown right here. There are 14 two-story homes identified uh, within the, the parcel. They don't have the exact location yet, but they have said it will not be on the south near other residences' property. It will be more located towards the interior. Uh, but each, between the eight different architectural types, there are two elevation styles between each of them. There's contemporary Spanish, which uses uh, architectural materials such as tile. You can see a little bit of that right, right here. Uh, and then there's a modern prairie, which uses a lot more stone and uh, a little bit more earth muted colors. Uh, here's an example of what the duplex would look like with a different architectural style. And most of those are located around the interior as it faces the center. Again, this is the, the elevations for the two-story homes. Uh, as it was one of the worries that was indicated during the neighborhood meeting, um, and so at that time, the applicant made comments that there would be 14 out of the 150 buildings, 166 units, but 14 of those would be these two-story homes. Uh, the maximum height the one on the left, the contemporary Spanish, is just about a foot and a half higher than the modern prairie, but the limit is 26 feet, which is no taller than what is currently allowed in the RSGR as a single family home. Uh, with that, there is a, an amenity area. It will have both a pool, a fitness center, uh, a recreational center on the inside. And uh, I have provided the, the elevations and floor plans for that today. I received them yesterday, but they included this conceptual image earlier on. So uh, looking forward, there are two deviations to the zoning code identified by the applicant's request. There is a reduction of the minimum front setback, which would be along Superstition Boulevard from 20 feet to 10 feet. That's more so that they can have the homes closer to the, to the street itself. That would allow for better pedestrian access, which is something that staff has asked for. Uh, and there is also, in, in order to complement the site flexibility, similar to what was talked about before, in order to provide for um, more units, there is the minimum rear setback, which will allow their, their site plan to, to be formed the way that, that was indicated as best designed. Uh, with that, the, on the right, I have shown the proposed development dimensions and standards based on, uh, in comparison to what the RM2 development standards allow for. So they are about half as dense as what the base RM2 standards are. Uh, which is already present in the, in the nearby area. So with that, they're only looking on changing a couple of these items. The applicant has conducted extensive public, public, public outreach out, out sorry, <laughs> mouth's a little dry after the whole meeting. So the applicant conducted a bunch of different uh, public outreach efforts. They indicated that they had hired a door-to-door uh, -door consultant firm. They, they attempted to knock on everyone's doors, but they found that they weren't really able to reach a lot of people at the door. There was a lot of, between the large lots and the no trespassing, uh, there was, they were a little discouraged by that, so they sent out letters instead and crafted a website in order to allow uh, all the residents to get a good view of the different aspects of the project. Uh, with that, they, they sent out some letters. Uh, staff received some comments from them. Um, there was a, 
One of the residents to the south expressed concern about the development impacts, about there being a lot of density, about, about being apartments or traffic in the area. Uh, a different property owner simply suggested that they, they would be happy to see this development because they would like an extension of the utility line so that they could develop their property. Um, there was a neighborhood meeting on September 7, 2021. The report for that has been included in the staff report with an extensive question and answer. Seven neighbors attended, including one over Zoom. Uh, there were concerns about construction and traffic impacts, such as the tax impacts uh, for property tax. Building height, which was <coughs> addressed by the comments before, water supply, and water retention. Uh, with that, I believe the water retention, similar to what was expressed before, uh, as, as the applicant talked with the neighbors, I think the, the concerns were actually alleviated <gasps> in that as they properly develop the site and make sure that water does not overflow or does not end up in the wrong places, that, that will actually alleviate some of the water issues because there are minor washes in this case, nothing like weeks wash, but minor tributaries that do flow through the site. And so the applicant will be obligated, it's part of the engineering that they will have to handle the water with the flows as well as keeping, keeping all the water that is on site on site. Uh, so with that, they believe that that will help that aspect of things. So staff's recommendation is the approval of P-21-73-PZ subject to the conditions of approval found in the staff report. I will make notice as you're reading them, there is a minor typo on condition three where the word this should have been the for, for the residents. Uh, other than that, the, the conditions stand as staff has uh, suggested. Please let me know if you have any other questions. All right, um, yeah, Nick, first one, I, I certainly, my concern always around this area is the traffic and traffic patterns and traffic impact. Um, you were saying that the deceleration lane, there is a plan for the deceleration lane. That's on the south side of Superstition Boulevard going into the community. That is correct. Okay. So that would be a, like a right-hand turn deceleration. Okay, all right. Um, traffic heading west on superstition now, I realize it may not be extensive but you could have you know there there's left turn lane. there's still a left you know there's still folks having to make a left turn there and it's going to stop that traffic dead so I there's not a plan for a, a, a left turn lane or something there to I don't, that. don't believe that the city engineer has indicated anything for that okay. all right I yeah okay um Okay. I understand your, yeah, that's your the worry for that. Okay. All right. Other questions? Um, they're going to develop the west side of Royal Palm when they put in, if they were to put in. Yes. Um, I know there's a lot of horse traffic that goes up Royal Palm because there's a trail that goes out onto the state land right there at the junction of Royal Palm and Superstition. What about any Step kind of... over there. Say again? There's a step over there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there any consideration for people with their horses and stuff? There actually is. It was uh, one of the things that we spoke with the applicant about back during the pre-application process. Um, for this, it's not that they, well, we would like to create a lot of connectivity, both for the, uh, the folks with horses as well as those who want to hike, take their dog out especially as the, the city is designing, well, not just the city, but the county have designed park systems further out over here. Um, this is county land that they have indicated would be a park, and there is a, a dog park that is currently being built right over here. So with that, staff mentioned that we would like to, to preserve some kind of access. Uh, in this case, uh, condition number three, the one I mentioned earlier, is actually the provision of a, um, a paseo or a within the open space included on the south, a trail, that would allow for access to cut across. Uh, unfortunately, that will require cooperation with the developers around it, but in order to try and get that to happen on a long term, we, wanted to, we had to start somewhere, and so condition number three is a requirement that within that 10, 10 feet of open space on the south, some kind of connectivity or trail may be provided. Well, I'm just worried are, about getting... Are you talking about right over here? Or, I'm okay. worried about getting north. Getting um, north? Yeah. yeah. How you got yeah. plan on getting people north? Nick, there's, there's a, a boarding stable right there mm -hmm. to the east of the property. That's that large lot right there. This one? Or? That one right there. That is a boarding uh, facility. And a lot of people ride out of there, go north, 
directly across the, the step over and, and head out through the desert that way. Yes. What are they gonna do or what is the city gonna do to make that area safe with all the additional traffic coming into the back entrance of the project? Because there will be a lot more traffic. Mm -hmm. Two and four. So the, yeah. the, the city's requiring a 40 foot dedication to improve Royal Palm. So and that will so, double the size of, of what we have for Royal Palm right and now. And so what that road cross section looks like, whether there's a detached, you know, sidewalk, whether there's a trail, you know, some of the things we're trying to do on the south, uh, 3,000 acres, you know, we're trying to do up here as well. So what that cross section looks like, what that road design, they have to dedicate it, they have to work with, they have to make those half street improvements and we can work with them to figure that out. The east side of the road, this is where the the city did not require sidewalk, street lights, anything in the Y area. So because we've extended the downtown influence, if you will, to Royal Palm, we think it's important to extend sidewalks along Royal Palm. On the east side of Royal Palm, there will just be a gravel shoulder um, that people can ride their horse on, but that doesn't mean that the city can't work with the developer to design some sort of trail or path system uh, on the west side as well. So those final details, we don't have all those details uh, as to what a path system, but as Nick said, we wanted to, when that other RM2 develops, there is an expectation that that developer also create an easement, maybe not through the center of the property, but to come back south to Scenic and then over to the county property. So we do want to create some sort of pedestrian walking trail connection. I don't know that horses will go west over to the county land, but at least to the north, um, we certainly need and, and work to accommodate that. You get some good bars down there. They'll be riding down there. Well, they can go <laughs> along scenic. So that is a discussion that, you know, scenic uh, to the west, we are gonna see another development that's to the west. That's where yeah. the old county park uh, cul-de-sac is that is gonna stay open as a trail access. So if we get rid of part of Scenic, um, west of, um, I don't know if it's Outpost or whatever that, that is, where the entrance to the old county park was, that, that will mean, that'll stay a trail. So Scenic will have a connectivity all the way over to uh, Idaho. What, uh, yeah, I'm just worried about getting them north though, to, yeah, right. them to the cross. state land. Okay. Yeah, well, whether there's, uh, the design of Royal Palm has not been done. I'm just, yeah. yes, I think that's a, a great point. We want to accommodate the uh, equestrian users um, south and east of this property. Um, what that looks like, I, I can't sit here tonight and say, oh, there will be a 12-foot um, equestrian trail on the west side of Royal Palm, unless you want to make that a motion, but I don't think we should design it here tonight. Okay, uh, other questions? Yes, Commissioner it, Barker. It sounded to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, Commissioner Cross, um, that your question dealt with the traffic on superstition for horses to cross there to get to the state land. Was that well, what you were talking about? Both, both, both there and Royal Palm, because people right. that live in this new development would be entering and exiting on that southwest or on the southeast corner of the property, whereas the, horse the horse residential. Well, that was and my so, concern, you know, that all the traffic along Royal Palm and up on horse, horses, horse riders have to follow the same traffic laws. They have to ride with the traffic, right. not against the traffic. Right. And so they can safely ride up the shoulder currently on heading north to the state trust land, but they would have to have something legally on the east side or on the west side of Royal Palm to come back down. And again, I think we can do, if you want to call them traffic counts of horses and find out how many people are using it and design an appropriate crossing of uh, superstition. So whether it needs an ad additional light or different pav pavement type, that all can be worked out if we're trying to encourage, and which I think we are, Mr. a continuation of the, the horse travel. But on the east side of the road, in this 40 feet, we'll now have 80 feet we can 
ultimately have an 80 foot right of way on Royal Palm that we can do something. Mr. Chair, <clears throat> just yes. want to remind the account, the uh, PNZ, this is a zoning hearing. Right. So it's not a plat hearing, it's just zoning. So remember, <clears throat> you're not really talking about the details of the design, you're just talking about the zoning at this time. Okay, thank you. Okay. Don't you make me ask about parking? You can ask, but <laughs> once again, it's this is zoning. Okay, other questions for Nick? Yeah. I don't, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Did, did Nick, did you finish your presentation, by the way? <laughs> yeah, there, okay. there are other slides oh. at the end that are just uh, okay. if they wanted to see more elevations, but. Okay. He had the questions thing up for us, so I, yeah. okay. I figured right. that was the. All right. Okay. Can, you, can you go back to the layout? Yes. That, there. Um, okay, now when you're talking front and rear setbacks, are you saying that the front setback only applies to those up on the northern side facing Superstition Boulevard? That is how the code is written, yes. Okay, so there you have three houses stacked up. Um, so what, there's 10 foot difference between those between each of those houses, or is that 20 feet? Uh, so the, the spacing between the houses, let's see if I can zoom in far enough. Let's see. That was the limit of what I could zoom in on, but let me look at the, the site plan. I believe it is 10 feet separations between the buildings themselves. Uh, they are, as a similar product type to what we just saw, there are, there are side yards and rear yards provided. Um, they are smaller yards, uh, given the kind of like rental nature of this product, but they, they, I believe it was 10 feet separations between the buildings themselves. Okay. And then uh, once you, the, the quirk of a multifamily development versus a single family development, even though these are single family type homes, uh, within the multifamily type development, the setbacks generally apply only on the exterior, and then it is building codes uh, of fire codes and things like separations between buildings that, that determine the kind of inside setbacks. I understand, and I this see. is a different type of product like I described earlier. I, I refer to this as a detached apartment. Right. So it's, you know, is it a single family house or is it an apartment? And the answer is, eh, a little bit of both. Yeah, it, it is, it really is a, a uh, now that it's kind of a newer trend within development, um, building code-wise, they often get treated like resident, uh, single family resident homes, I believe. Yeah. Even though the overall, de overall development is multifamily, so it if is. The, if these yeah. were single family homes, then there'd be a bigger gap between houses typically, wouldn't there? Uh, typically, part of that is the, the plan of, um, I, I guess how the plan development works together. I, I believe that the, the applicant does have a presentation and they do have some comments regarding that uh, based on what I had seen of it. Um, for example, there are shared, so take for example, um, I, I think their graphic might, might serve better, yeah. yeah. but like the edge wall, so you have the walls around your home and then one of the edges of your backyard is the wall of the other home. Okay. So in that sense, they are smaller, it's a smaller arrangement. Uh, I believe that they'll be able to speak to that better, but um, some of that is the quirk of the project and part of the plan development. And did I read it right that there's about one and a half parking spaces per unit? Uh, yeah, approximately. It's about 1.8, but yes, okay, very close. Is that enough? Uh, it meets the, the city codes. Okay. Personally, I, I had suggested, you know, we, we do want there to be ample guest parking and the like. Uh, but in terms of the city codes, they do meet the city parking codes. Okay. Thank you. Okay, other other questions for Nick? Right. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Oh, go, go ahead, Jesse. Uh, Nick, will this development require a connection to the sewer main? It will require a connection to the sewer main, and uh, the, the sewer company has indicated that it will be able to. Let's, I'm trying to find a more. So they, they have indicated that, let's see, I think this is Winchester. Mm -hmm. Oh, I need to. Not scenic. Okay, so I believe this is Winchester right here. They have indicated that that is, I believe, where the sewer main is located. Uh, I may be okay. confusing that with, well. That's right. 
Okay, that's where. Yeah, yeah. The Arizona Water Company has a different different street for the water main. So one was, I believe, on the water main. I believe then is on Royal Palm, and then the sewer main is on Winchester and Scenic. Yeah. Has I, I contacted the sewer district, and that's that's where they say it is, south of Scenic on Winchester. Um, just scaling it off along existing roads is about a half a mile sewer main extension. Have you guys addressed the pressure that's going to be put on the zoning of the lots that that sewer line runs adjacent to? Um, I, I'm on the sewer board, and <laughs> one of the things we that I've come up with is where the sewer main goes, the city grows. And I kind of believe if we put an extra half mile of sewer main up there, every lot adjacent to it is going to be under pressure for higher density zoning. Have you guys thought about that or looked into that at all? Um, and uh, and also any other discussions with the sewer district? Um, in your report or in the packet that we got, uh, the only reference to contact with the sewer is on page 310 of 311. It's about two sentences that, you know, Darren says um, it's possible to do it, and I agree with him, it's possible to do it. Um, it's certainly nothing that the sewer district has been planning on, um, and this is the first that I've heard of extending sewer mains this far north towards superstition. So, again, any comments on what kind of pressure those other properties are going to have to be rezoned to a higher density. Thanks. Thank you. It has been under consideration. Uh, this is part of the, the, in terms of the, the overall effect on the area, this is part of the downtown core designated by the general plan. So uh, I believe in general there is, there is a lot of consideration for what in general will change in the area. Uh, I, I believe it would do well to have further discussions with the sewer district. Uh, we primarily contact and interface with them through these reviews, uh, given that we are separate separate entities, they, they being pseudo-governmental. Um, we, so we, we were primarily acting off of the, the recommendation of, of their engineer, Ann Latimer, uh, who reviewed this project. But uh, I definitely agree, as, as, as this entire area grows, especially as it's slotted for that, uh, that further consideration is given. So if I yeah, could, I Mr. Chair, uh, Darren reviews every single one of these projects. He is on the project committee. So every project that comes to this board, Darren sees it. What I will say too is there's another 400 units that are coming south of scenic east of Idaho. So we already know that there's a townhome project and apartment projects on the east side of Idaho, south of scenic. Uh, we know that the sewer was extended uh, north on Winchester to accommodate a 10 unit building. Um, there is sewer at City Hall, so there are different, you don't have to loop sewer, but like you would water, but there is sewer also. So I don't know what Darren has for his capital facilities plan, but um, when development happens, um, or what is in Darren's CIP, but uh, I know that Darren also works out arrangements with developers in terms of cost sharing or payback plans and, and everything else. So uh, I, I think we okay. involve Darren as much as we, as we can. Right, and, and I guess my comment to the board is when we put this sewer main in there, you are going to attract more high density development. And I don't know that that's clear to the board or the city council for that matter. But, but when we put that sewer line in, um, you know, these high density developments require a sewer main. Um, so, you know, it's the chicken and the egg. If the sewer main's there, the high density is coming. Yeah, right now I have the zoning map up, uh, Jesse, and just to the west of this property is also RM2. To the southeast is at Royal Palm and Scenic. There's uh, not that they will develop, but we have a lot of property zone RM2 in the area. We have another 15-acre uh, project, I think, is to the south on Royal Palm that um, they went and got 
uh, tax credits through the Arizona Department of Housing. I think that was like 150 units. So there's a lot of density coming to this area. So, okay, great. It's just the first the first I've been hearing it. Um, you know, on the sewer board and and this commission. So, just want to make sure everybody else realizes when we put that sewer main in, that's where the high density is going. Uh, thanks, and that's that's all I've got. Thanks. Uh, um, Commissioner Begley, did you have a question? Is this an alternative to the monstrosity that was denied about two years ago? No, that was on this B1 here, which involved, uh, I think, this parcel. Mm -hmm. There's, I think, seven acres here that involved this four-story building that was uh, pummeled to death, I guess maybe you could say. <laughs> I wasn't going to be mean, but mm -hmm. okay. So in this case, most of the units are single story. Uh, as noted, 14 out of the 150 buildings will be two story at a limit of 26 feet. The RSGR zone actually allows up to 35 feet in building height. So in this case, it's, it's still below that. Uh, I, I think a lot of people learned the lesson that no one wants 40 feet buildings in this area. So. I don't want 40 feet buildings anywhere. Yeah. I don't even want streets. Curbs or sidewalks either. <laughs> but I know some people like Robin need to have those oh. those things. Ooh. Oh, that was a slam. <laughs> I love right. you, Robin. You okay. know it. Um, no, I, what I'd like I have to do is else. before we... Oh, I'm sorry. Can I just make oh, a sorry. comment here? This is... Um, if it's designated, which it is, part of the downtown area to address Jesse's point, this uh, is going to be high density. Mm -hmm. it, it just will be. It's, that'll be the nature of the downtown designation. And it ends at Royal Palm. Royal Palm and Superstition is, is, are the boundaries, correct, Larry? Well, yes, everything you see yeah. on Nick's map, it doesn't. It goes further south, obviously, yes. but yeah, this is just a, yeah. a snapshot of the so, downtown. So I, I think that this is something that we're going to see more and more of, as Jesse said, and and to get the sewer started in the area seems like a good idea. <laughs> Take care of some of that. Okay. All right. What I would like to do is. Uh, take a short break before we bring the applicant up, so I'll... Uh
called to order. Uh, and at this time, we will invite the applicant to the, the Chris, I guess, or Chris? No, I'm not no. Chris. Okay. I can be if you'd like me to. Okay, well, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna call you Chris from here on out, so. No worries, no Who worries. do you prefer to be? Uh, good evening, Chair, members of the Commission. Brennan Ray, uh, 70702, that's my old address, 1850 North Central, with a law firm of Birch and Cracky Oval, here representing Keystone Home. It's been a while since I've been before this group. The last time I was here was about two years ago, talking about a development at the northeast corner of Southern and Meridian. A similar development to this one. That one was a council use permit uh, for a similar type one-story uh, single-family uh, leased home community. But here tonight to talk about Keystone Homes. And if you're not familiar with them, they're a local family-owned business that's been uh, building homes throughout this valley um, for over 30 years. Um, they have a well-deserved reputation um, for building high-quality homes. And we're certainly excited tonight to talk to you guys about the Havenly superstition. And um, <clears throat> I'd like to talk a little bit, um, just very briefly, that this is a community, and I'll get into it a little bit more, but this type of a development, similar to the one that you heard before, kind of combines the best of two worlds. That is a single-family traditional residential development with multifamily living lease terms. Um, I appreciate that the word apartments has been uh, bantered about uh, when talking about this product, but um, having worked on this type of, a, of, of development for a number of years, um, it, it's safe to say that these aren't apartments. Um, they are standalone residences that people lease. They are homes. Um, but we're excited because we think that this provides a high quality um, alternative housing option for the city and certainly within the downtown redevelopment area. We believe that it's consistent with good planning pr principles in that it provides an appropriate transition in densities from what is at the edge of the redevelopment area and what exists to the east as you look on that map. We're certainly consistent with and supported by the goals, policies uh, of the general plan. Um, we certainly appreciate staff working with us and certainly appreciate the effort that they put into their report and the presentation tonight. We're certainly okay with stipulations one through 11 and we would request your approval, uh, a recommendation for approval at the appropriate time. Again, I'm, I'm gonna kind of touch on a few things, trying not to replow the furrows that uh, Nick had laid before us, uh, but I, there's a few things. One of the things that you'll see, I know there was a, a discussion about washes uh, relative to the last case as well. And so we know that you can see on this site, obviously 15 gross acres, but you can see that there's a kind of a main wash that runs from the northeast to the southwest through our site. Um, we are responsible for ensuring that that wash, that water that would regularly go in there continues to flow. And so we will be working with uh, city staff uh, to ensure that it's engineered properly and that likely will be underground. Um, so we know that that is important and there's a consideration to do that. Um, certainly as you look, and this is the bigger picture for the downtown um, redevelopment area and you can see in there where we are relative to it. And I've taken the liberty of clipping a few excerpts from the general plan um, that support our application. And as was discussed earlier by a number of you, um, certainly uh, high density housing is something that is desired and encouraged within this downtown mixed use area. And I wanna be careful when I use the word high density because sometimes that has and connotates different things to different people. Certainly the density that we are proposing, which is about 11 to the acre, is higher density than what exists in the area. Um, and certainly as we look to how um, Apache Junction has developed and certainly there are areas where um, anything over three to the acre would be considered high density residential. Yet in the grand scale of things, when we're talking high density residential, usually that's associated with 18 uh, dwelling units to the acre and higher. So we do not obviously fall into that category, but nevertheless, we think that there are a number of reasons in the general plan to support this application as we kind of look at it. Um, these are the details uh, of the plan. You can see there, I've kind of summarized them, some of which you already know. Um, a few that I will emphasize. One is the amount of open space that we do have. Um, there is 38% open space. It is a gated community. I mean, and I know that there was a discussion uh, earlier about um, 
equestrian access along Royal Palm Road. And certainly stipulation number three um, addresses, and, and Nick mentioned his report, us providing a trail uh, along the southern side of our development. But we are more than happy and agreeable to an additional stipulation, should you also choose, that would say something along the lines of the applicant shall work with staff to provide a multi-use trail on the west side of Royal Palm Road or our east side of the development. However you want to word that is acceptable to us. But we understand the need to provide access northbound as well um, to um, the state land piece there. And so we're okay with that. Um, there was another comment earlier, a question, and I want to kind of be a little bit proactive in terms of electrical vehicles. Um, we do have um, charging stations planned, uh, three electrical stations planned, and we do are planning on infrastructure for an additional six. That would bring a total to nine, um, and that just kind of depends. But one of the things I really want to talk about is, is what this product is and what it isn't. As I mentioned, it takes the best of single family living um, standalone residences and combines it with multifamily. And really what this type of a development is, is it's a hybrid choice. It's a hybrid concept and it's a lifestyle choice. Most residents have the ability to buy a home but are purposefully choosing this single family rental lifestyle. Um, you look at it, and I know um, in the previous presentation they touched on it, and I, like I said, I've had the opportunity to work on the first one and uh, hopefully work on many more of this type of development, that in terms of demographics, it's, it's, it's a niche that's here to stay, and that it appeals to singles, it appeals to young families, uh, couples, uh, and sometimes mature couples. You can see in there the kind of general uh, range of professions that live in this type of a community. It's healthcare, education, insurance, and a whole lot more. You can see there that over where our household incomes come from, and that half uh, has 50 to 200,000. There are also some on the other side of the scale that are less than 50,000 um, that are, live in this type of a development. And so when we look at it and how it lives, this was the graphic I believe Nick was referring to. Um, and the exhibit on the left I'll walk through and then the one on the right. The exhibit on the left is kind of the traditional layout of what you will see. Um, and each one, uh, each of these homes has a private rear yard. In this case, our private rear yards, um, apologize for that. Um, each of these private rear yards in this development are a minimum of 10 feet. And each of those private rear yards will be landscaped. But here you can see how it corresponds how you've got them set up to where, you know, an orange one has backyards and stuff like that. The other thing on the right is try to give you a kind of an illustration of how these typically lay out in that uh, almost all of them uh, have kind of this, what I'll call a portal entry. Nick said spider uh, park. I guess we can refer to it like that as well, but you can see that there is an open space at what I'll call these pods. Uh, where residents are able to gather and socialize, and then they are also able to go to their residence. And one of the reasons that this design is important is what, what has been found at relative to this type of a community is that people enjoy um, a sense of privacy. They enjoy the sense that knowing that someone's going to walk down a path, they're walking to a specific person, rather than a traditional apartment complex where you have sidewalks running everywhere and people wandering through getting to a certain spot uh, and then realizing they're wrong and then wandering back through. This is focused. There are um, addressing portals out in front of each one of these um, to direct people as to what goes on here. So um, I'm not going to go in too far uh, to the details, just merely on this one to emphasize that um, we've tried and worked really hard to create a sense of arrival off of Superstition Boulevard uh, through creating a kind of a landscape boulevard feel with a center median that's landscaped. And you can see where those gates are and really um, creating that sense of arrival um, by having residents and guests come to this clubhouse and amenity area that you can see there. And that's certainly a, a real um, a good depiction as to what that will look like. That's the monument sign, you guys have seen that. Um, on the south side, I wanted to touch on that as well, and just so you can see it in a little more detail um, than the large um, overall site plan. You can see in that southern half, there is a dog park and there are a number of pocket parks. 
But the other thing that I would point out to you is that we do have pedestrian access and pedestrian gates. One of the things that we wanted to do was activate Royal Palm, uh, given that it is a roadway. And so what we've done is we've oriented a number of those units to where the front doors will face. And you can kind of see, if I can make the cursor work, you can kind of see this is one of those instances uh, where uh, the fronts of the residences face um, Royal Palm. In this instance, they're the rears, but we've tried to create a diverse street scene. Um, and again, recognize that a lot of these are, are one-story homes. When Nick was talking about no uh, two-story homes, uh, we were referring to this area here on the south because we're sensitive that we back up to a number of neighbors along our south side. And so during our neighborhood meeting, um, indicated that all of these residences here on the south side uh, would be one story. Um, this is kind of give you an idea of, of what one of those pocket parks might look like. And obviously the fencing, this is what you would see for that pedestrian access where we have those through it. Um, Nick touched on the floor plans. Again, I'm not going to belabor that point. Um, our square footages range from 722 square feet all the way up to a little bit shy of 1,600 square feet. And again, as we look at it, there are a number of duplexes of the 150 buildings. 16 of those buildings are duplexes, which is roughly 10% of the site. And again, as Nick indicated, those are oriented internally around a central drive aisle. That's another plan. Um, this is the two-story plan, again, that Nick mentioned. Um, and our, our max height obviously is, is 26 feet, and that is well below um, the 40 feet that the RN2 would traditionally allow. Um, this is kind of a, a, an artist's rendering or perspective of the Paseo of what that would look like. And as I mentioned earlier, um, this is kind of what you would expect to see along Royal Palm in terms of the homes facing and, and fencing being along there. Not going to talk about the wall plan, but let me talk briefly about neighborhood outreach. One of the things that we did with the pandemic that we're in is to create a website. And so we've created it. You can see the address there poorly in blue um, because of the hyperlink, but that is an actual website. I, you can see it there. Um, that has been up since uh, August 27th. Uh, and on that website, if you were to scroll down and you can see the little button in the right hand corner, uh, to contact us. And so that was included on the notices that we did mail out. The staff indicated we did try to do door-to-door -door outreach, um, but people have a lot of gates and no, pr no trespassing signs, and we're not interested in uh, trying to create a ruckus to be able to talk to people about this. Um, but we did have that neighborhood meeting on September 7th, uh, gave people the opportunity to attend in person or virtually, uh, not certain of people's feelings on pandemic and stuff like that. Um, six showed up and, and one was in person and Nick kind of uh, gave you a, of a, a summary of that and that's included in your report. But at the end of the day, this is what we're trying to get to. A one story, predominantly one story, um, overwhelmingly detached, uh, single family home community that people can rent. Um, we've done a lot of uh, work um, on the quality, and I think that's hopefully reflected, and, and you would agree in this plan, uh, with the amount of attention that we've paid along Superstition Boulevard, along Royal Palm with the landscaping and the orientation of the buildings, um, with uh, the separation that we've got. Again, um, on our north side, I know this question came up, I believe, from Commissioner Cantwell about, well, why are you requesting 10 feet, and where does that play, and how does that look into that? Um, that has to do with the RM2 standards, and typically that would have um, presumptively been for a traditional apartment development. But I'll tell you that on this case, on that north side, we do have from our property line, there's a 10-foot landscape back, land foot landscape setback, thank you. <laughs> uh, and then behind that, there's an additional 10 feet. So from our property line to our nearest building, it's actually 20 feet. Uh, and so I know it's a 10-foot setback, um, but we are providing that. And so um, we, we think we've been sensitive to some of the existing properties through our design. Um, and again, we think we, we comply with the general plan and support it. So with that, 
I'm happy to answer any questions, but we would recommend this commission's uh, recommendation to the council for approval. And chair, if I may, uh, I'm not sure uh, residents that would like to speak, but if there is a need for me to stand up afterwards, I'd like that opportunity um, to stand up if necessary. Yeah, that's fine, right, right? Yeah, when we do the, the public hearing, if there's a, if it makes sense for you to come back up and respond, we'll, we will do that. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Um, With that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay. Um, you know, Ray, I guess my first one, it goes back with this traffic. I'm, I appreciate the gated community part. I'm, I get a little, get a little uneasy thinking about how these cars, how vehicles are going to enter and eat, in, enter and then depart from this community onto Superstition Boulevard when they're having to manage the gates opening and closing and then trying to man, you know, have, manage the traffic that's already on these roads. I, um, I, you know, I, I know how cars heading eastbound come off that roundabout and they're, they're hustling along here. That's, you know, they're, they're gaining speed. And then you've got, I know you have a deceleration lane, but then you have all these cars going in slowly because they, they've got to worry about the gate. And then the ones coming out, if they're making a left on the superstition. They've got to worry about the gate, the car behind them, Making a left turn, the traffic coming both ways. I'm, I'm a little, I'm a little um, uncertain about how that, how yeah. that will not yeah. create a, a, uh, a dangerous situation. Sure, uh, chair, members of the commission. Obviously, it's it's never our intention to create a dangerous situation. Um, as I believe you are all familiar with, as part of this process, the application is submitted and reviewed by various departments, including the city's engineering department. Um, at least at the time we've reviewed it and up to this point, no one has asked us for a traffic impact study. Um, I think it's because of the, the low number of trips uh, that this type of a development would generate. Um, but if, if we need to work with staff and take a deeper dive, look at, at how access off of our entrance to Superdition Boulevard happens, we're more than happy to do that. A few things I'd like to point out though relative to the site plan, and hopefully I can do this and I'll try to use the little magic drawer thing. Uh, our gates to this development are right here. Um, so as you can see, with those gates being back, anyone exiting the development doesn't feel any need or pressure to all of a sudden spring out into Superstition Boulevard because of a gate okay. closing behind them. Yeah, that I, I didn't, I saw in that photo that the, it looked like the gates were some, I didn't realize those were the gated part of the community. Mm -hmm. Okay, well then that's, that resolves that. That's a not the case bit. on the one on Royal Palm though, right? That's right up. Correct, in terms of Royal Palm, um, Royal Palm, again, that is resident access only. Um, so no guests will allow there. Those gates are located approximately uh, right there. Um, and, and you know, if, if, if when we're going through um, construction documents and plans, staff feels that we need to shift that a little bit back, why that's something that, that, that we can certainly take a look at, but we feel that we are providing sufficient spacing for resident only entrance down there, and that'll be a key fob access down there on that south. Okay. Uh, other questions, commissioners? Sure. Oh, yes, Commissioner Cantwell. Can we go back to the four pod, the four house? Yeah, there. Um, are there walls in between those? Yeah, through the chair, Commissioner Cantwell, th that is correct. So what you would have in this case is you would have a wall, and I apologize, it's not a straight line, but a wall that would run there. A wall, that's a really <laughs> horrible <laughs> line. <laughs> if, it, if, my, if my pen would work, I could draw. Construction project. <laughs> 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 Uh, but no, there would be a wall there and there would be a wall there. Similarly over here, you can kind of see in this instance where that rear yard starts, there's a wall there and a wall there and well, you know, various walls. So yeah, they are private rear yards. And one of the things that I failed to mention uh, that I think is, is worthwhile is that this is one property owner, one property management company that management company is responsible for the maintenance of everything. So everything that you see on this plan, including the private rear yards, that property management company is responsible to maintain. Additionally, even on the interior, um, 
if there's a light bulb that goes out and you don't want to change it, you can put a request into the property management company and they will come in and they will change the light bulb for you. So it's, it represents truly a, a lock it and leave it type of a lifestyle. Chair? Okay. Yes, um, Commissioner Cross. Being that your houses, your buildings here are three deep, are you considering putting fire protection in at least on the back row houses or all of the residences? Yeah, through the chair, Commissioner Cross, if, if I can ask my client that question, if you give me a sec. All of them will be sprinklered. Awesome. Glad to hear that. Yeah, my concern would be the availability to the residents with from fire and medical. But other questions? No. Um, oh. Yeah, I got one more question for him. Yep, sure. I know it's this is not part of it. In your uh, plant choices you have written down on the on the plan I you know you do um, state that you're going to be going by the um, Arizona water um, recommendations for low water use plants um, you did list the plants that you propose to use in your plat or pallet I hope that you don't change that because I did not see any oleander and I hope never to see any oleander. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for that. It was oleander. You know? <laughs> oleander and horses don't work yeah, good together don't. and you do have horses to your south and east. So. Uh, through, the, through the chair, uh, Commissioner Cross, yes, we understand. I don't believe oleander work with humans too good either. No, but, it does not. Um, no, thank but, you. but to your point uh, about horses, we did have a woman that was immediately on our southwest side yep. uh, who was concerned about the type of trees that we were putting in. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't remember the species off of the top of my head, but um, to the extent that we had a certain tree species that would affect her horses so close to the property, we've said, we're not going to do that. Yeah. Um, cool. cool. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? All right, um, uh, thank you. Thank you. Right, appreciate that. All right, this is a uh, public hearing. Uh, members of the public have the opportunity to speak on this matter. Uh, it must be related to this case only. Uh, recognize, come down, please state your name, your address, um, and then you have five minutes. So, uh, George, one more time. <coughs> George Schroeder, 244 West Virginia. This is the property that I came here tonight for. This is absolutely the worst representation that we want in Apache Junction. So the stars all align. Somebody makes a 30-year general plan, says, oh, this is going to be a high-density area. Nobody came and asked him. Nobody told him. He didn't look into the stars and say, this is it. This is going to be what we want for the rest of it. No, we don't want that. This is exactly what we don't want. And while I'm at it, the waterway that goes through there, Larry, I'm going to be in touch with the federal government. You cannot take a federal waterway as big as this one and omit it. You can't cover it. You can't divert it. Those are the exact words in the federal law. So to your developer, caution ahead. Now, this is, this is Mesa stuff. This is HOAs. This is high density garbage. This is what we don't want. We don't want HOA. We don't want the high density. We don't want the problems that are associated with this property. We don't want anything west and north of Idaho. I speak for a lot of people. Maybe not you, maybe not you, certainly not Larry. Larry would have this whole area filled with houses and you know 15 story buildings if he had it his way it's not going to happen larry so you need to think really hard because he's like this is this is one of those things where if you let one in like he said this one's going to come in this one's going to come in this one's going to come in i was adamantly opposed to that turnabout whatever you call it that's crap they're, it's in another state. We don't want them here. We don't need them here. 
and I'm going to do what I can never to have any more of those uh, in, our, in our area. This is totally wrong. So that area is not developed for anything. So we have to get the infrastructure up. We have to work with how many people do we got to do, you know, and uh, you know, rub the wrong way, rub the right way to get this into our community. When nobody wants it, it's a, a view blocker. Or he's gonna put all the one single, single family units on the outside. He's gonna have two, you know, what, 14, how many buildings, two story buildings in the middle. Really, does it matter? It's still gonna be a block to, to our mountain. So we really need to think about this. It, it's, a no, it's a no brainer, it's a no go. Just because somebody thinks that this is going to be a high density area. It doesn't have to be. He's the only one saying it. Developer's not saying it. Nobody else is saying it. So we need, we need to put a kibosh on it. Anyway, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Yes. If you could remind the public not to have personal attacks. Okay. Uh, I think that you. should be part of your uh, repertoire when you yeah, start you. a public hearing. Thank you. Yeah, that's, I, uh, please allow me to clarify that, that um, it's not, it's it neither appropriate nor fair to make personal comments or attacks on any of the individuals here. Um, I can say for a fact that these folks work diligently trying to help the city develop the way it needs to. And I think that doesn't, that kind of comment is not acceptable at all. So I would ask anyone else to please uh, refrain from that. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else that wishes to, to comment? Yes. I'm uh, Jeff Barlett. I'm over at 108 North Meridian Drive, apartment 220 in Apache Junction, Arizona. And I'd like to say, I mean, I, I like the design of this property. It looks really nice. I like how they made it here. And this is 166 homes for people who need to find a home here. And the idea of high density multifamily is a good idea in my opinion. I mean, when I think of that, I mean, I used to live in New York City when I was a kid for two years. So, I mean, when I think of high-density multifamily, I think of a large apartment building a couple stories tall. And a lot of people like that in Apache, a lot of people in Apache Junction <laughs> don't seem to like that idea. I mean, I don't get why. It creates homes for people to live. And uh, I know some people will complain about things like, it might obstruct their view of the mountain or something like that. But the thing is, when you bring in 166 units, the demographics are eventually gonna change over time. You're gonna get new residents in. And so, I mean, the thing is, I mean, you can't please everybody. I mean, maybe there might be some people who've been living in Apache Junction for a while, or they might not be happy about something, but you bring in a bunch of new residents, they're gonna be happy that there's a home available for them, a place for them to live, hopefully at an affordable rate. And uh, I think it would be a good thing here. And sometimes, I mean, public opinion, I mean, it's good to listen to people's concerns, but sometimes it's gonna change. I mean, depending on, especially when you're moving people in, I mean, the moment this gets approved, I mean, the demographics are gonna change. And so another thing, I mean, I've heard comments about like HOAs. I don't really think that's a good idea. Subsidized housing, I mean, that just causes rent to go up. I don't know if much about if that's involved in this or not, but I'm just giving my opinion there. Just HOAs subsidizing government money for housing. I don't think it would be a good idea if that's going on, but overall, I think this is a nice property and I think it looks nice. The houses appear to be designed really nice and multifamily residential, I mean, building up is a good thing because when you build on top of a property that creates more property available for people to rent and like I said before, supply and demand, you increase the supply, it's gonna lower the demand and it's gonna lower the cost for people and uh, thank you and God bless. Thank you. Anyone else who wishes to make a comment? Yes, please, ma'am. Hi, 
I'm Casey Bradley. I'm at 635 North Royal Palm, so I am directly affected by this. And I just, I, I don't understand the need to cram this many houses on that parcel, to cram this many people. I, I walk that parcel every day. It's not that big. And to think that we're going to cram that many people on it is just kind of mind boggling to me. And my other concern besides, I mean, I, I'm directly across the street, probably where this new gate off of Royal Palm is supposed to go in. My brother lived in a community like this in Mesa. In Mesa. <laughs> and it was the exact same issues that they had there. They eventually had to put a traffic light outside of the homeowner gate because there was so much traffic going through there. That road and that area is just too small and condensed to have anything, have that much traffic going through it. I mean, it's the Autobahn right now with just fries on the corner. It's crazy. And then the horses, I can't, I, it just breaks my heart to think of these people trying to ride out on their horses and not being able to, most people aren't considerate for people with horses. Most people still will drive down that road 100 miles an hour. You get people living in an area that aren't familiar with that kind of lifestyle, and you're going to have accidents. You are going to have people hurt. And I'm an animal lover, and the thought of not having my animals coming in to my yard, I, I get quail. I even get javelina come in my yard, and those aren't our favorite animals. But I get all of these animals and all of this beautiful nature in my yard, and I have this wonderful, unobstructed view looking out over the horizon. And I'm not even talking about the mountain. I'm talking looking north of me. And it just, it hurts my heart to, to it hurts me to think that this is a possibility, that this could be built. I, I'm all for, I'm all for progress. I'm all for all of that. In fact, I actually work in the industry. I work in the residential construction industry. But I just, I just don't think this is a good fit. And that's just my opinion as a homeowner, right directly across the street from it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, anyone else that wishes to make comment? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, Beth Williamson, 971 East Ranch Road. I'm actually the boarding stable owner uh, right across the street from there. I really, really appreciate the fact that you've brought up the fact of all of the different riders. I know we have about 40 riders that go out every weekend and ride right up that, you know, right over to the, to the north and cross over. Truthfully, we ride right across the street onto that property as well quite a bit. I know quite of them do. Um, I'm definitely worried about the dangerous situation in regards to the traffic coming in and out of that main gate. As you all know, that's become, <laughs> I mean, superstition with all the, everything being built up top, it's become a raceway going across that. We've actually lost quite a few animals that um, our neighbors have, we have, that have gotten hit because people don't stop uh, there anymore. And not only the people you know, you're talking about coming off the roundabout and that they would, you know, they, they do have the right of way and the, the turn in portion, but if you have people coming that are coming from the mountain down and they're stopped right there, you have people going way too fast, <laughs> but they're going way too fast. They're going to, that's going to cause major accidents right there where they're just going to either go around them into the dirt or they're going to just completely rear end them. Um, so I definitely worry about the traffic. Sorry, I made a bunch of notes while you guys were all talking, so I apologize. Um, the one thing that I was also worrying about is uh, I know they said that they had all these different little park areas in the, you know, I know in Apache Junction we worry about our water. We don't have grass. We don't have pasture for our horses. We don't have any of that um, for the mere fact that water is major out here. And it, it does worry me that they have all the different little, little water things. Um, the other one they had said was uh, that they had gone door to door. And they did that on August uh, 27th, the meeting notice that we got in the mail was sent out. We got it two days before the actual meeting. So no, we did not attend. We would have had we had more time, but truthfully, that was Labor Day time period, and we were on vacation with our family. Um, so that was a tough, 
a tough one. I, you can't really say that you canvassed the neighborhood and you checked with everybody when the time was this big. Um, I just, uh, sorry. Um, when you talk about like the traffic count, and you know you had said something about a traffic count in regards to the horses. I mean, I can tell you coming from our stable alone, we're talking, you're probably talking 100 riders through the week. I mean, it's all the same people, but they're all, you know, they go out, my group is all trail riders. One of the things about our boarding stable is the fact that you can ride out the gate and ride right into the state land, ride over the superstition skies now again, ride, you know, all over the place. Um, we've had people ride over to the library, you know, I mean, that's part of what Apache Junction is all about is having a horse happy, horse friendly community. And if you put 166 people in this tiny little area that's not much bigger than our turnout for our horses, you're talking about a lot of traffic. I mean, so say of the 166 people, you have um, half of them going to work in the morning, you have 80 cars going out onto Superstition Boulevard on top of everybody else. Um, that's coming down from the mountain, that's just a lot of traffic for that road. And it's a very dangerous road to begin with. Um, and that makes me very nervous. Um, uh, uh, I assume this is kind of the same development that they have, like the Fountain Hills one that they're developing is the same type of thing. The thing of it is, is we're not the same type of community as Fountain Hills. I know that some people would like us to be a higher end community or whatever you might want to say, but in all reality, we're a small town in a big town area. That's what sells Apache Junction, is the fact that you still have neighbors. You still have the ability to go out and walk your dog across the street, and you have the ability to watch quail walk down the road or coyotes when you're going in the morning. Um, Uh-oh, I better hurry. <laughs> so. Um, our, our, our biggest thing is that I just really think that it hasn't been thought out enough. I think it's too many that we need to look at the fact that that's a lot of um, people to pack into one tiny area. Not just our horses, but there's horses surrounding us. Pretty much every single property around us is a horse property. And it will come up with smell. It will come up with, I mean, we haul our, our manure away every single day so that we don't worry about that type of thing. But I know that's not the case with everybody. And um, I just really think it's something that should be thought of and we should really think again of whether this is what we want to have right in there. I understand progress. I know it's going to sell eventually. I know eventually something will be built there, but I just don't think this is the right fit. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So, so anyone else that wishes to give a statement? Yes, sir. I'll just take a minute. Um, Two things my wife didn't mention. Your name again. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Ken Bradley, 635 North Royal Palm Road. Um, two things my wife didn't mention. Um, we do walk that property quite a bit. We walk our dogs through there. And there are uh, two owls that actually nest there. And, and we have also witnessed two um, hawks that also nest there. I would request maybe a wildlife study. Just just putting that out there. I don't know if that's something we can do. And then definitely, as everybody was saying about the traffic, I think a traffic study definitely needs to be done if it hasn't already been initiated. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Anyone else wish to give comment? Yes, sir. Tim Sheehan, uh, 357 South Winchester Road, Apache Junction. Uh, I own AJ Apartments. I know there's a lot of people here that don't like these communities. I get calls weekly with people crying, looking, looking for places to live. These are very, you know, business people, good incomes. They don't want to purchase a house. These are the communities they're looking for, and we need them in the downtown area. I know we don't need them up by the mountains and everything, but in that downtown corridor area, and the way these are, this community and the last community being single level, I was sort of surprised that they aren't higher level communities with the views, but these are sort of lower density housing, multifamily housing, and, and we definitely need them in this area. Everybody's moving here right now because the jobs are here, and I know I've heard a lot of talk about uh, the commercial area and downtown and businesses, but if we don't have rooftops like these, the businesses don't come. They do studies and to see what their customers are going to be and where they live. 
and we do need these. I, I think the downtown area is great for these, and I think this would be a good project. There will be more traffic, but it all seems to be flood flowing out away from the acreage property to me. So, thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Anyone else wish to make comments? Uh, yes, ma'am. Ms. Ortiz from Property 591 East Superstition Boulevard. I just bought the place um, also because I was looking to a little, something a little different for my sons and myself. Um, something more in a rural area, which I, I thought I found. I worked a lot for this place. It took me about six months to finally find the right home for my sons and myself. Um, and then when I found out that they want to build this right in front of my home, I felt, well, I feel like I, I'm losing it all. Like it's all going down the drain, all my hard work. Um, also, like uh, the reason I like it here is the landscape, the way it is already. Uh, I feel like this would be killing the habitat here, the animals. Um, it's very peaceful. Those two stories would be going right in front of my kitchen view, right in front of my home. It will be blocking the Superstition Mountain, um, as well as the walks won't be the same in the area. It won't feel as rural anymore. Um, I, I, uh, I would feel like maybe, you know, I thought I made the right choice. I was super happy until this. It, it just feels like a nightmare. Um, it totally, yeah, it totally concerns me for me and my kids, the, our walks, um, the horses, the views, everything. It's just beautiful. And then until I heard this, it was just, it was just disappointing. So I, I agree um, with the neighbors. I don't um, think this is something good. Also, so many people right there. Also, I moved a little further from the city, from Mesa as well, um, for something more private, more away from people. <laughs> I never thought I would ha be able to have uh, an acre. Um, and so I just, I love it here, but this is um, totally ruining it for me and a lot of people. Um, I think that's that's all for now. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Wish yes, ma'am. Hello, my name is Julie Fritz and I live at 575 North Royal Palm Road. Now, I bought my home back in 04, and I have seen a lot of growth and a lot of changes come along since then. I just mainly want to state my opposition to this, as I am directly affected by it. Their gate's going to actually open right up across from my bedroom window. I'm not happy with this development. I don't feel that 15 acres is enough to hold that many people. I don't care if it's in apartments or single family residences. So I'm against it. I just wanted to let that be known. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> is there anyone else that wishes to give comment? Seeing none, I, I close the uh, public hearing um, and uh, I will Give the opportunity for any, any before we look at the findings of fact, any uh, discussion or comments from the commission. Chair, yes, Vice Chair Anchi. Yeah. Um, yes, these two projects are similar, but yet they're very different in a lot of ways. The first one was kind of dealing with a parcel that nobody really wanted that was hard to develop it's kind of an off cast outcast this is prime development property in our downtown corridor in prime rsgr area in the middle of all these built rsgr properties um, we have a bunch of high-density housing going in right now 
that's coming, the one we just approved. There's a bunch coming in on the other side of this area along Idaho. We have stuff that was approved that's coming in further down on Superstition that's being built right now. We have some coming in down at Ironwood and Superstition. Um, we have stuff coming for people. Um, we only have so much land in this area to deal with. I don't think we have, you know, have to rush to develop every square inch of our land right now. Um, this is a important area within our our town. This looking at this, it doesn't give me warm and fuzzies. I don't. I don't know. I look at it and it just doesn't appeal to me in that spot. I don't think it's necessarily a bad product. I just don't think it fits in that spot. I think it clashes with all the neighbors there. I think it's going to cause a lot of traffic issues. Um, I think it's going to cause traffic issues with our horse community there, especially with that trail right there. You know, we talk of a future trail and horse trail access, but this will be in and the traffic will be there long before that trail ever exists. Um, it, to me, I just, I can't find a good reason to rush on this. Um, you know, we're supposed to be good stewards to the city and I can't find it in my heart to rush forward and rezone this. Right, thank you. Other comments, Commissioner? Yes, Chair. Yes, Commissioner Bailey. I'm having a hard time bringing this property into a higher density zone. Properties around there are all zoned rural, and this defeats that. I have an issue with the three houses in a row. The only fire access to that would be from a house away if the house in the middle has a fire. I'm not against these kind of properties coming into town, but I'm against it being in this zone. I don't think it fits. And I know we need to have some of this, but I don't think we need it right there. Thank you. Other comments, Commissioner Cantwell? Yeah, this this one is is struggling because you know I recognize the need for the higher density in the downtown district but this is right on the edge of the downtown district um, if the rest of the downtown district had already been developed I'd probably be a little bit more open to it with this being the first one going in it it, it just doesn't feel right being that close to the, the rural side, and this is right on the perimeter of the downtown district, and we don't know how the downtown district as a whole is going to develop. Uh, so I tend to agree that I, you know, I, I don't have a problem with the development. Um, I do have a little bit of a problem with the location okay. and the timing. Thank you. Commissioner Barker. My major concern is traffic. I don't think that Superstition is built for this at all. It's a mess right there. It's running off the sides and the, the roadway's a mess. That's my major problem with it. And the second problem is this, even though this has exactly the same unit per acre as the one we saw prior, this feels, looks all crammed up. It, it, it just looks all crammed up. And there aren't 166 people here. There's 300 and some odd people that will be living here. And with the superstition in the condition it is, unless the city is going to completely redo superstition, make it a four-lane road right there, I, 
I just feel like this is an accident waiting to happen. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Mr. Buss, you, you know, this is your opportunity. Anything to. <laughs> this is my opportunity. <laughs> I might be able to get on board with it if there was 50% um, less houses or <laughs> dwelling units. It does seem like it's very congested in that small 15 acres. The other property was 22 acres with 50% or 58% open spaces mm -hmm. throughout it. Mm -hmm. This one's 38%. That's why it looks so cramped. That's why it is so cramped. Um, yeah, I'm kind of having a hard time dealing with, with those issues, plus the neighbors. I definitely see it being a, a huge conflict with the, with the horse people. It, uh, both smells, both traffic. Um, it's it's definitely gonna, going going to be an issue. So, thank you. Very good. Thank you, Commissioner Cross. Um, from my standpoint, uh, I think I probably would just have to echo what has been stated here. Um, I, as I said, stated from the beginning, I was very concerned about traffic flow. Uh, I believe that that is a there is just a dangerous, we're, we're taking risks with the traffic and assuming that everybody will behave themselves and nobody will speed and they won't be going too fast and trying to make the hard left turns. It, I, it gives me grave, grave concern. Um, and then you, and I, uh, as Commissioner Cantwell had said, I, you know, uh, this is right at the edge of the of the downtown uh, <laughs> core, and uh, and I understand there are there are other other projects that are going to be coming and developing in that, in actually in the downtown. So um, I I this would not be for me something I'd be real comfortable with. So, um, so Mr. Chair. The, I'm sorry, I'm Jesse. Like, where did that come from? <laughs> it's the Lord. Before you voted on this thing. Okay, I'm sorry, um, Jesse, go. Yeah, I, I have a couple issues. Um, one is is transparency between the sewer board and the and the and the city and the <sighs> sewer board staff and the city staff. Um, this is a, you know, uh, uh, first I've heard of extending sewer lines to the north, and that's something that, if it has been discussed between the sewer staff and the city, it has not been relayed to the sewer board, and pretty much not to the Planning and Zoning Commission either. So I think we need to work on a little bit of transparency between those two organizations, and so that's something for a, another day. Um, and then the other concern is that you know, the downtown development district, we did, or at least the planning and zoning commission did approve that. And uh, when I when I look at that purple area on the map, and then I also look at the, the, um, the RSGR zoning, um, in my mind, the RSGR trumps, but I guess it really doesn't. I mean, we've, we've approved that that's how the city's going to grow into that purple area on the map. And uh, so we need to consider that. We need to start understanding it and perhaps have Larry lay out what that means for us. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, as far as the development goes, I, um, I think it's a little too dense as well. Um, I live in the RSGR area and I'm, I will resist. <laughs> Densifying that, but inside this the purple area, we've we've kind of committed to to a different plan. So I think we all need to sit back and try to understand what that means. Uh, and that's all I have, Mr. Chair. If I, if I could, yes. So I think there was a question about the the general plan. It was passed by this body. It was passed by the council. It was approved by the voters by three-quarter vote, 75% of the voters who voted in the 
election in August of 2020 approved the general plan. So when staff meets with developers and they ask us, is this consistent with the general plan? We say yes, we actually, um, the density that we have been encouraging is about 13 units an acre. The, as proposed here, is the, the gross density. So um, because there's other projects coming down the pipeline, doesn't, you have to look at this project as this project. Yes, it fits in with the context of downtown, but because other density is coming, to me, isn't a rationale for saying that this project isn't, doesn't meet, meet the, the general plan. So, I don't know, I guess staff, when we meet with folks and we say this is the general plan, these are the densities that the community, the council, the plan commission have all approved, that's what we tell developers. And I think that's our responsibility. That's what we have to do is explain to folks what the general plan means. That doesn't mean that, I guess, the council could make an amendment and move the boundary, some other boundary, but this is what we have to work with today, and that's how we make recommendations, and that's how we meet with people. In terms of traffic, um, the developer has said they do a traffic study. I personally think we should do a traffic study. Um, there's been several developments that, to me, would warrant a traffic study. Um, we did not require one for the project at Meridian and Southern, 195 units. And uh, the one that uh, just this commission just approved, which was a similar project, more units, they did a traffic study, but we didn't require a traffic study. So I think the city needs to uh, get a policy in place as to what our threshold is for a traffic study, because to me, it's not just the number of units, but what's the character of the area? What's going on with the traffic circle? What about Royal Palm? So to me, a traffic study would certainly be warranted um, as a condition of approval. So staff recommend approval, and I think we were right to do so. Mr. Chair. When, when the citizens of this community voted on your general plan, was that property zoned exactly what it is now, or did that change since then? So first of all, it's not my general plan. It is the community's general plan that right. they that voted on, and we general helped plan. develop that. So the zoning that's there today is the zoning that was in place in August of 2020. 2020. So just like the property to the west is zoned RM2, which we showed on the map, there are higher densities. I don't If people want to spend a little bit of time looking at the zoning map, east of Royal Palm, all these are zoned for uh, 40 units an acre. So that zoning, a lot of the zoning was in place prior to 1978 when the city became a city. The city inherited a lot of zoning from the county. I would venture to say that this is more than 13 units an acre. 400 units in there, that's higher than 13 units an acre. That's also a mobile home park. I'm just telling you, it's high density. That's Along with this mobile home park that, again, predates yeah. the city. It's also on so. the other side of Idaho. Well, again, it's in the downtown. I'm not gonna argue anymore with you folks. I'm just saying, I think we were right to make our recommendation. It's now your turn to vote. Uh, Mr. Chair. Yes. Mr. Yeah. Um, I don't think this is a bad proposal based on the master plan. We do have a bit of a disconnect between the zoning map and the long-term master plan map, and I think that's what's causing us some problems. If most of the other blue part was already filled in, I probably wouldn't have a problem with this. The fact, my, the reason I'm having a, a problem with this is this is the first one going in not something later on. And it's, it's just a timing thing, and I realize that you know the way these things come to us is not under our control. Just explaining my opinion. If, you know, uh, the recommendation would be that if we want to do that, then we extend the B3 zoning to this entire blue area. And maybe that's one of the outcomes from this. 
If this was B3, then it wouldn't be a problem. Um, if I could make a suggestion, um, I, I think for a number of us, the, the traffic is a concern. Um, again, if this were, if this were being uh, presented to us elsewhere, I'd, I don't know that I would have had the concern. I, I am just deeply concerned about that location and the traffic. Um, is it conceivable that we could um, continue this pending a traffic study? Just kind of like Joel. Come on. Well, you can certainly make that motion. The applicant still, there's a public hearing that's set for October 18th, I believe, with the city council. So that's been advertised. So we do have to take it. You could, you could recommend to the council that it be continued for, you know, some time certain, but we do have to have a right. public hearing. These folks are entitled to a public hearing on October 18th at city council. Right. So. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Chair, members of the council, uh, members of the board. Commission, wow, well, it's no almost idea. 10 o'clock. It's almost 10 o'clock. <laughs> <Yeah. clears throat> the, uh, <clears throat> The applicant says it would take about six weeks to do a traffic study. So um, you might want to continue it to maybe two months. That's what I suggest. Would that, would that be about right? <laughs> yeah, <coughs> hold on a sec. Two months, so the next meeting and on my calendar. I think it's yeah. um, It'll be end of end of November. Yeah, the twenty third of November. Twenty third is not a council day, so, so are you okay to be the fourth? I have more Tuesday? issues than just traffic. I mean, but I'll play along if I'm the only one that feels that way. Well, I guess if we want to. If you want to do we can make we make that motion and then we'll see if the commission I'd rather, agrees. I'd rather vote a denial and if that fails then we can go that way. That would be November 9th. Mm. Uh, 20, 23rd. 23rd. Is that you got a calendar? Larry, I didn't bring Yeah, I was back. looking at um, fourth Tuesday now, would be November twenty third. Is that right before Thanksgiving? I guess I'm just trying to figure it out. So, Mr. Chair, you might want to call for a motion. Um, more and more discussion. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. I'll uh, I'll ask for a, a motion on uh, on what is it? Uh, PZ dash twenty one dash sixty. No, that's not wrong. Sorry, PC, 21 73 dash PC. So. Mr. Chair. Yes. I move the Planning and Zoning Commission um, recommend to the City Council that we continue this item until the Planning and Zoning meeting of November 23rd, 2021. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second. Uh, I got a roll call. Larry? Uh, Commissioner Heck. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> Sorry. Commissioner Cross. Yes. Commissioner Gage. Yes. Commissioner Barker. Yes. Commissioner Begaman. Yes. Commissioner Cantwell. Yes. Commissioner Hanchy. Vice Chair Hanchy, I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, motion carries. The item is uh, recommended for Continuance till November 23rd. As I mentioned, there is already advertised public hearing. It will go to the council on October 18th. So what will happen on the 18th? The council can continue it. Okay. Well, would have to. Or, huh? <clears throat> would have to continue it. Because yeah. there's no P and Z recommendation. They have to have a recommendation, yeah. Yeah. So they'll have to continue it to December 7th earliest. Earliest, correct. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. Next. All right, thank you. Uh, that being said, uh, moving on, the, there's apparently no old business scheduled. 
Uh, new, no new business uh, scheduled. Information reports. The chair has no information reports for this evening. Director's report. No, sir. Nothing. Nothing. All right. So selection of meeting dates, times, locations. Chair. I move that the Planning and Zoning Commission hold a regular meeting on October 12th, 2021 at 7 p.m. in the City Council Chambers located at 300 East Superstition Boulevard. In the event there are no items to be brought forward to the Commission, these meetings may be canceled. Notification of cancellation properly posted and the Commission notified by staff. We're going to have a motion. I have a second. I have a second. Roll call. Larry. Vice Chair Hanchi. Yes. Uh, Chair Heck. Yes. Commissioner Cross. Yes. Commissioner Gage. Yes. Commissioner Barker. Yes. Commissioner Begaman. Yes. Commissioner Cant Cantwell. Yes. Motion carries, Mr. Chair. Very good. Thank you. That being said, I adjourn this meeting. Thank you.